what is the right biblical view of salvation all right so y'all ain't gonna want to miss this one this is one to go down in the record books we got cheap consciousness vocab malone on the other side we got hurricane hasha that you also known as general hasha chief elder general hasha then we got um hurricane sub-zero also known as priest danya allah or danya allah all right all right and salute to Kansu Sheshma Moon. I know he's gonna do a great job moderating. Let's get it. Who out of the two uh two of y'all wanna go first? Uh, my name is Vocab. I'm downtown Phoenix, Arizona, originally from Columbus, Ohio. And uh apologetics, debate, evangelism. And here we are with Laron uh tonight. And uh, I'm just glad to be on debating um what I think is the most important thing. Uh, the first thing, you know, and so I think it's an important topic, and I uh, thank you, Joel, for inviting us on. Who want to go first? Asha, Asha, you up, you up. Oh, shalom, shalom, shalom to all of Israel, uh, everybody out there, the brothers that already shot arrows and these brothers and these cat shields, ISUIC, uh, who else, uh, GMS, uh, Sakari, um, every, ISUPK. yeah, ISUPK, Tazari, Brothers that already tore them brothers apart, you know, and laid down the foundation. You know what I'm saying? And uh, shout out to uh, the ambassadors of Christ, uh, Lions of Israel, the Mac, and you know, all praise to the Creator, man, his beloved Son. Let's eat. So, um, first of all, I want to say shalom to everybody that's taking time out of their schedule tonight to watch this discussion. Um, you know, y'all could have been doing anything else tonight. It's a Saturday night, you know, but you chose to come here and hear information. So, I appreciate everybody that's watching. Um, those that support us and those that don't, I want to take time out to salute my brother, Khan Su. This is a good brother that's doing a lot in our community, a well-respected elder in the city of Chicago. You know, that he takes time out of his busy schedule to come and, um, you know, be neutral and try to make sure that we have a positive, fruitful discussion. So I say salute to that brother. Of course, Joel Benjamin, you know what I'm saying, always, you know, showing us love, you know what I'm saying, one of the few in the conscious community that has a platform that's, you know, basically open to everyone, man. There's no bias here. You have everybody from comedic science uh, to Israelites to Moors, everybody that comes through here. So salute to him. And um, salute to the brothers that oppose us tonight, uh, G Khan and uh, Vocab Malone. You know, um, you brothers took time out your schedule to have this discussion. So I'm hoping that we have a discussion, uh, a, a good discussion, and that it is fruitful and um, the audience benefits from this discussion. So with that, I yield the floor. We're going to start off with um, two 15-minute uh, premises each on each side. We're going to start with G-Con and Brother Vocab Malone that are going to have 15 minutes each, which totals 30 minutes in order to express their premise. As they express their premise after the 30 minutes, then the brother Hashar and the brother Daniela will be able to retort. So I believe we're going to start with brother Vocab Malone. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. Again, very, very honored to be here. And uh, I hope the people listen up with a, with an open mind and open heart because uh, this is the most important thing to discuss. How are we made right before God? What is the biblical view of salvation? So first, I'll ask G. Khan if he could turn to Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Romans chapter 1, verse 16, and read that passage. G. Khan, you got it? Romans 1 and 16. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And while you're getting that 1 Corinthians 15, let me say something about this passage you just read. Whatever the gospel is, Paul's not ashamed of it. And then he defines how important it is because he says it's the power of God. That means the gospel shows God's power unto salvation. And so that relates directly to what we're discussing tonight. We can't discuss salvation without ha having some understanding of what it is. And here it's directly tied to the gospel. And what does a person have to do with the gospel? They have to believe it to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So now let's see what is the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. 
All right, it's uh, moreover, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received and, re and wherein ye stand, by which also are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And then uh, if you read verse 4. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So he says that he declared this gospel. He preached it to them. They received it, and it's how they stand. He also says it's how they're saved. So again, we see that connection. The gospel is how a person is saved. He wants them to remember it. So this is something that is not he's just going to pass on and, and move on to other stuff. He's going to constantly be reminding people about this gospel they've got to believe. And he says he delivered it to them first of all. That Greek word is protos, protos. And that means it's the first most important thing. And some translations will say, I deliver to you as of the first thing, that which I receive. So this gospel is protos. That means the gospel is the first thing. He tells it to the first. It's the center. It matters. Now, what is it? He defines it with the events of Christ's work while he was on the earth. And there's two verses I want to look at specifically. Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Notice that all this is according to the scriptures. That's the old covenant. And so I'm going to get to that in a second on one of the points I'm going to make. Keep that in mind. It's according to the scriptures. And also it says Christ died for our sins. So that is a key about what the gospel is. If you could turn, Laron. To Romans chapter 6 verse 23 Romans chapter 6 verse 23 and then I'm gonna show in these passages my first point which is no one can do what the law requires so this is the bad news before the good news you got that Romans 6 23 yep it says uh for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ so there's a contrast there wage is something you earn gift is something you're given we earn death. We can be given eternal life. But how? Through Christ. What did he do? 1 Corinthians 15 established that. Romans 3.23. Can you get that, LeBron? It says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Again, this is the bad news. All have sinned. All fall short of the glory of God. That means according to Romans 6.23, all will receive death. And that relates to the very first point of the bad news. No one can do what the law requires. No one can do what the law requires. That is absolutely important to remember. No one can do what the law requires. Now, that doesn't mean the law within the Old Covenant is bad. In fact, this is the second point. The Old Covenant points to Christ. Can you get that Luke chapter 24? Luke chapter 24, please, Ron. Start with uh, 25 and 27 to show the Old Covenant points to Christ. All right, 24. All and then right. after you, yeah, go ahead. It says, then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And, be and beginning at the prophets, beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures of the concerning these things. And that they means, drew. Go ahead, I'm sorry. That means they still. These disciples on the road to Emmaus, as Christ speaks to them after the resurrection, they still were not understanding the centrality of what he was doing and how it was different than their expectation. They were slow of heart to believe. And I would say that a lot of people that call themselves Hebrew Israelites today are also slow of heart to believe. They think they're believing it, but they're not seeing the centrality of Christ, and that's why we got to discuss this today. All that the prophets have spoken, that means he's saying everything that every prophet spoke, points to me ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory beginning at Moses and all the prophets that basically means he's rocking through the Tanakh as they walk back from that road to Emmaus he expounded to them on all the scriptures the things concerning himself that means you can find him everywhere and he's breaking it down and he does the same thing again in Luke if you could get that Luke chapter 24 verse 45 through 49 please brother LeBron it says then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said it to them, thus it is written and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. 
and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Notice again, these first century disciples are still slow of heart. That's why he has to open their understanding so they can actually understand the scriptures. Now, we know they knew the scriptures, these first century Israelites, but they didn't understand the scriptures. That's why I understand is mentioned twice right there in verse 45. So Christ has to explain it to them again. And remember, this is after his resurrection. It is written. So again, that goes in relationship to what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, that these things that Christ would do are written. He had to suffer to rise from the dead the third day. And why? Again, relating back to 1 Corinthians 15, repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name. That's how it happens. Not according to any other means, but it has to be done in his name among who? All nations. Now that's a point of contention. But it seems clear and obvious as a person reads it. Now look, beginning at Jerusalem, and that goes back to Romans 1.16, to the Jew first and also to the Greek and to the Gentile. That relates perfectly. You are witnesses of these things. They saw what happened. They saw. They heard. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Wait in the city of Jerusalem. Be and do with power from a high. And that we see get fulfilled in Acts chapter 2 where Joel gets fulfilled where they receive the Holy Spirit, and then they go out into all the earth once they have that. So point one in this discussion is that no one can do what the law requires. Point two is that the Old Covenant points to Christ. Point three is that Christ fulfilled the law. He fulfilled the Old Covenant and paid the penalty for our sin. Could you get that, LeBron, please? Romans chapter 5, verses 18 through 20. Therefore... As by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For by, for as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, greater grace, or grace did much more abound, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ. So there's an offense, and it goes down in Genesis chapter 3, and through Adam, all are condemned. It's called the federal headship of Adam. We all get it because of that. And there's a contrast with this second or this last Adam, Christ, by the righteousness of one, so Christ perfectly fulfills the law. There's nothing in the law he didn't do exact and right. And the thing is, the dudes running around in first century Palestine, they thought they had done it. But in Matthew 5, Christ gives a glimpse of what the law is really all about when he says, Oh, you've heard it said, don't commit adultery. But if you look upon a woman and lust in your heart, you've broken it. Same thing with murder and hate in your heart. It shows... That no one keeps the law, but Christ never had the hate in his heart, never had that murder, never had the lust, never had the adultery. So therefore, he has his righteousness that he then gives or imputes to us, which is a biblical word, the free gift. Notice again, Christ earns it. He gives it to us freely if we're in union with him. Came upon all men. Usually when the Bible says all men like that, it means all kinds of men. And so that's something that I feel to co uh it's got to be dealt with as well, because it's all men. It's not all Israel, nothing like that. It's all men unto justification of life. For it was by one man's disobedience, again, he didn't keep the law, Adam. Many were made sinners. We inherit that. So by the obedience of one shall many may be righteous. And so Christ kept the law perfectly and paid the penalty for our sin debt that we could not pay. If we could have paid it, there would have been another way, and that's what all the other religions are all about. They're about some other way to try to make sinful humans right with God. The message of grace and of the cross is that that's an impossibility, therefore the necessity of Christ. Point four, this is the last one, is that Christ ushered in a new and better covenant. This covenant is superior. It's better, and that's what we got to be under, is this new and better covenant that Christ ushered in. Ron, could you please read Hebrews chapter 7, verses 11 through 18. 
It says, if therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priesthood should arise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed, there is a made a necessity a change also of the law. For it, for he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, of which no man give attendance at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning any priesthood. And it is yet for more it is, it is yet more evident, far more evident, for that after the sim similitude of Melchizedek there arises another priest who was made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life, for he testified, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. For there is rarely a disannulling of the commandment going going before for the weakness and unprofitable thereof. For the law so what the author my bad, let me jump in here if I could, please. Thank you. Uh, one moment. You have four minutes and fifty six right. seconds. What the what the author of Hebrews is saying right there is that the Levitical priesthood was not perfect. That's why there was a need for something better. Because Christ is not of the order of the Levites. We know that. He's not a son of Aaron. He's after the order of Melchizedek. But priest had to be after the order of the Levites and, and sons of Aaron. So that means there's a change. Look at verse 12. Change is mentioned twice, and the change is for something better. Now, Christ is from the tribe of Judah, verse 14 says. He's reiterating the fact that he doesn't, even though he's a priest, he doesn't accord with the old covenant stipulations. He's of a different manner and different nature. Here's the key. Is verse 18. There is fairly a disannulling of the commandment going before the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. That Greek word, disannul, is athetasis. Athetasis. And it means in the vines, and you can look it up at the Strongs if you'd like, a setting aside, an abolition. Think about that. He's saying that those Levitical orders have been set aside and abolished. And if you look at Hebrews 9.26, the very same word is used. The very same Greek word is used. And in this reference, it refers to sin. And it means to put away sin. So this part of the old covenant has been disannulled, set aside, put away. We are under a new covenant, no longer under this old covenant. And guess what? Scripture says that it is a better one. It's a superior one. If you read the rest of the passage, specifically verse 22, it says Jesus made a surety of a better testament. And so now we want to be under the covenant of Christ, this new covenant, and that is how salvation is given. LeRon, you got two minutes, I think. For the vocab, do you release those two minutes? Do you, do you uh, yield the floor? Well, since there's two minutes, here would be the question I would ask. All right. Well, since you got two Christ minutes, 37. Second. I think these are important things to answer. Since Christ... Hold on, no questions right now. We're not taking questions right now. All right, all right. Let me just say something within this context of what I just mentioned. It's directly related. Since Christ is a better priest and a permanent priest, why then would there be a need for priests today? Because remember, they would give sacrifices. Well, now the sacrifice that's permanent has been given. So what would the function of a priest be today since Christ always makes intercession on our behalf? And in fact, in the Old Covenant, the priest's work was never done. There was no seats up in there, right? They couldn't sit down. Christ is sitting down because his work is completed. So if he's sitting down, why is someone else going to say, oh, I'm still under the Old Covenant. I'm a priest, and I'm going to go ahead and try to keep on standing up. When Christ says, I'm sitting down, the work is finished. And that's why he said on the cross, it is finished and remember the ironic priesthood was temporary inferior or not bring perfection according to hebrews 7 18 but why was it instituted then because it pointed to christ his atoning work specifically so the pattern is what yahweh is trying to establish well guess what the pattern has been fulfilled in the words of the author of hebrews he says here was the shadow 
Here's the substance. We're about that substance, not about that shadow. And that's why we're not Roman Catholics with all their priests. There is no need now that the high priest has come. And if someone was going to say they were a priest under this new covenant, it would be like, what do they do? Do they help fellow Israelites distinguish differences in their skin between leprosy and just temporary rashes? Do they live off the sustenance given to them One by minute. the people? You know what I'm minute. saying? Do they, do they do the daily operations in the temple and the tabernacle? Well, we know they don't do that. There's, do they have the Urim and the Thummim? What would, a, what would they do? There is nothing for them to do. And it's as if Christ is saying, if you want to, it's as if Yahweh is saying, you want to try to live under the old covenant and you want to still have a priestly order, I'm going to make it difficult. I'm going to take away this thing in Jerusalem where you can't even institute those anymore. And so the question would be, if someone doesn't, this is to the Tanakh only cats, for example. 30 seconds. If you are not doing those things a priest should do, how's your sin getting paid for? And if someone in the new covenant is saying they're a priest, why, when Christ has done, done it all? I yield. Floor is yield. No objections. Then we'll go to the brother G Consciousness. Brother G Consciousness. Right, do you cool. take the floor? Can you, guys, can you guys hear me? Am I clear? Yes, sir. Do you take the floor? Uh, I think that uh, the brother laid out the premise pretty well uh, as far as what is salvation. Also, we've seen in the text that it was clear that in Romans 5, you know, uh, by well, one. Brother LaRon, your time has started. I'm letting you know that. Okay, cool. It says, by one man's sin, um, by one man's sin, uh, the, uh, by one man's offense, sin entered into the world, which was Adam. And so, therefore, sin and death fell upon all men. So, I think it is clear that it's only safe to say, according to what the scriptures are saying, that if sin fell upon all men by Adam's offense, then they also should be given the right just as well to, um, as, the, as the text says in Romans, uh, to have that, that grace and that mercy. And I think that's what the, uh, the, the scriptures imply. Uh, when you look at um, what, what the gospel is, he was clear on what the gospel was. I had no problem with any of those things. I think that the scriptures once again pointed to what he was saying. Um, Galatians chapter 3, which we know who Paul is, and Paul refers back to the Old Testament a lot. And that's what I'm going to be dealing with a lot, the Old Testament, and then somewhat when the questions arise on these questions concerning the, uh, salvation and, and who was it for. Uh, it says in uh, Galatians 3 and 6, it says, Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. It says, Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. So you, if, you are, if you are of faith, you are the children of Abraham, right? And we know that they'll run to the scripture in Romans 9 and, 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 and go to that and uh, show us that, you know, what was for Israel. And that's fine. But it was also for the other nations just as well. And we're going to prove that later on. It says in the scripture foreseen that God will justify the heathen through faith. Preach before the gospel unto Abraham saying. Now, Paul is, 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 is very brief here. And he, and he refers us back to the Old Testament. And he's blunt with it, and he says that the gospel was preached into Abraham, so we need to go back to the Old Testament and really see what is the gospel saying, and, um, and, and what is this Old Testament saying that he's referring back to. And you can find those scriptures, um, which we're going to go back to here in a minute. He says, for seeing that God will justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, in thee shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. As confirmed by what the brother, uh, what I read earlier for the brother vocab concerning them going out and going into all the world and to preach basically to all nations. This is the same thing. So now we can kind of clarify what the gospel is, right? And it says, "In these shall all the nations be blessed." In other words, there was something that was in Abraham that was going to cause all the nations of the earth be to be blessed. And Romans chapter 5 is clear what was in Abraham. We know what Adam had produced first, sin and death, misery. So the second person that will come will be the second Adam. What will he produce? He will produce or be a blessing. So the people was waiting on a seed to come. Hence, when we look at Genesis 3 and 15, when men try to resolve an issue themselves, 
here God comes with a redemptive plan and says that the seed of the woman shall come and then also breaks it down farther when we deal with Genesis 3 and, 20, uh, and, and, and Genesis 3. It talks about how he made them coats of skin or shed blood, innocent blood that was shed for the remission of their sin or to cover them, basically. So he gave them a redemptive plan early on, and we see that later on in that redemptive plan that Israel was uh, and Abraham them had uh, also uh, shared that just as well. So it, it pulls right back to Romans 5 because Romans 5 shows us that Adam tripped and Christ got the grip. But before Christ came, they were sacrificing, and these sacrifices was pointing to Christ of blood being shed. But we're going we're gonna to deal with that, though. Um, uh, let's look at it. So it says, he says, the gospel was preached to Abraham. So let's jump back. We could jump back and look at some of these scriptures where the gospel was preached to Abraham at. Um, let's look at, um, jump back to Galatians. I'm sorry, Genesis chapter 12. It says, shut down. It says, uh, verse 12 and 2. And I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will call, I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curse thee. And in thee, Shall all the families of the be uh, of the earth be blessed? So at, once again, we see that all the families of the earth is going to be blessed through what was in Abraham, which is that seed, which is Christ, that will come forth to bless the nations, basically. And we see that He's already depicted in Genesis, where we see that the similar uh, uh, figurativeness is being, uh, where blood is being shed to cover Adam, whereas Adam himself tried to resolve the issue himself. We weren't uh, making figs and aprons, and God came and made them coats of skin. And we're going to deal with that, too, because coats of skin means that something had to die. Some blood was shed. And then the very next chapter, we see the redactor, which possibly could have been Moses, pointing to basically uh, 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 Cain and Abel, the sacrifices of Cain and Abel, why Abel's sacrifice was acceptable and why uh, 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 Cain's wasn't acceptable to uh, to him. And it has something to do with blood when you look at it overall, right? So let's go. Let's let's look what it says. Let's jump to seventeen. Genesis seventeen. Now, in Genesis seventeen, Abraham is given a uh, the sign of the covenant, which is the circumcision, right? But watch what it says, though. Remember, you always seen blood, blood in, blood out. That's how we used to say it when I was when I was too wooing it. You know what I'm saying? In that blood gang, and, and, and any any gang does that. But it says, uh, "This is my covenant." This is uh, Genesis 17 and 10. This is my covenant, which ye shall uh, keep between me and you, and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised, and he shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token. Are of the covenant between me and you. So this would be a sign of the covenant between me and you. And he that is eight days old should be circumcised among you. Every man child in your generations. He that is born in thy house or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. Now notice this. There are two people here. There's someone that's in the house and someone that is out of the house. That's what you need to look at. And is a stranger, which is not of thy seed. This person is not of Abraham's seed, but watch what needs to happen with his foreskin. So the token or the seal or the sign can be in the foreskin of somebody which is not the seed of Abraham, which is bought with money. Now watch what it says. He that is born in thy house, and he that is bought with money must needs to be circumcised. And my covenant should be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. Now, audience, I will ask you this. The seed that is not Abraham's is the token or the sign in his flesh for an everlasting covenant. Yes, it is. Let's continue on. And we ain't even got to the New Testament yet because I'm bad with this Old Testament. I can stay there and defeat him and don't even have to go to the New. But that's another story there. Watch what it says. And the uncircumcised man child whose flesh or 
foreskin or his foreskin is not who is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. For instance, we also know what the circumcision represent. God ain't got these people just running around with knives just slitting on themselves and it doesn't represent anything. Remember, to enter in on the sign of the covenant or the contract is blood. If you break that covenant, your blood is shed and you're torn to pieces. And the seed is not going to come through there, right? Why do we know that? Because we see with Zipporah, when the Lord met her in the way, and he met her in the way, and he was going to kill a child, and she circumcised the child and threw the foreskin down before Abraham and said, A bloody man thou art because of the circumcision. So therefore... The circumcision means something. We know that the gospel was preached unto Abraham about concerning the seed, what is the sign, and why is the sign in the foreskin also of the strangers just as well that is not of Abraham's seed. There's a reason for that. We're going to deal with that. Watch what it says. And the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of, of his foreskin is who is not circumcised, that soul should be cut off from his people. He have broken my covenant. And this is concerning the the the, uh, the seed that is un, uh, that is that's a stranger just as well. This is concerning that that part that stranger just as well. So we see this. Let's jump back over to what. Let's jump back over to what's being said in Galatians. Matter of fact, I'm sorry. Let's keep it over here. And uh, consciousness, you know, your screen is locked, right? You have five minutes. I'm going to pause it. Joel had a question. You have four minutes. Yeah, okay. Seconds. Yeah, his screen is unlocked now. All right, go ahead, G. Con. Right, G. Con, you got four minutes, 59 seconds. Yeah, what I was doing was I was reading at the same time. I like to have my screen up. Okay, I, okay, I, I don't know. Okay. Do All right, so I, let's jump back over to uh, Genesis, uh, Genesis 3 so we can get some understanding here. All right, so look. Your boy Adam tried to resolve it himself. He made coasters of fig trees of aprons, right? Let's jump down and let's look at 3 and 15. Here's what the promise said. This is where Romans 5 come into play at. And the Lord God said unto this serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, right? And above all, every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Watch what he says, King on 15. And I will put enmity between thy seed and the woman, between, I mean, between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It should bruise thy head, and thou should bruise his heel. Anybody that knows this verse theologically or whatever you want to call yourself, biblically or whatever, this verse is speaking about a redemptive act of Christ, basically, and, and, and the seed coming into the world. Hence, we understand this and we know this because when we look at Genesis, Chapter 4, she said, I have gotten a man child from the Lord, probably expecting this child sooner than possible, uh, earlier than, than what it was, whatever the case may be. Now, watch what he says. Let's jump down to 20. Let's jump down 21, Genesis 3 and 21. And to, and, 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 and to Adam also and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skins, right? So we look at that word coats of skins and just uh that word that word is um where is it at? Where is that word at? Coats of skins. That word is or and that word means hold on. I'm freezing up a little bit with this thing. Well, anyways, it says he made. There it is. Come on, you guys. Or. Yeah, that's the word right there. And what it means, it means skin. Uh, implication of hide, leather, hide, leather, skin. So he made them coats of skin. So through Adam's sin, blood was shed. The first blood that we see being shed is due to the fact of what Adam did. Hence, Romans chapter 5 says the same thing. Um, so therefore. Let's jump over. We see the coast of skin was made to cover them. This is also a redemptive act to cover them 
or something died in place of a substitute of them where they should have died, basically. For us, you know, on that very day, so to speak. But they died Two minutes. Two minutes. All, right. All right, so cool. Let's jump to Genesis 4. Now, Genesis 4 says, The Lord said it to Cain, Genesis 4 and 6. It says, In the process of 4 and 3, And in the process of time it came to pass, that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel... I mean, and Abel, he also brought up the first lean of his flock of the fact thereof, and the Lord had respect to Abel and his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect, and Cain was very wrong. So what I want to bring out is this is, is that these two people are coming. This is the first religious war. One person coming by blood, the other one coming another way. But they was told, and they knew what to do, because the Lord told them, if thou doest well, should thou not be received? How would you know to do well, except you was told to do well? Somebody was playing games, right? So anyways, um, when you look at it, they're going to bring out script as far as they might talk about John 4 and 22. We're going to dismantle that. But with that being said, I'll close with that. All right. So you agree to yield the floor. You had 50 seconds left. The floor has been yielded. Brother Hashan, are you ready? You have the floor. All right. Um, I'm going to help them with this. Um, the um, because he got a PowerPoint and I gotta lock the screen. Um, okay, as far as the PowerPoint, right? Yeah, he's gonna talk and give his um part on it. All right, there we go, there we go. Now, nah, just you just press it and you just let me know, just press it. And we're gonna we're gonna flow like that. So, so you got it, yeah, we we, we up here, we live, we got it. All right. 15 minutes when you start, brother. All right, you ready? Yes, sir. All right, let's go. All right, all right, all right, all right. Y'all seen the topic title, and if you listen to them closely, you see that they deviated from the topic with many scriptures that they use out of context, okay? So now we're just going to go, you know, they want to go off topic. I'm going to rear it back on the road a little bit. We make no apologies. This is a deconstruction of the Apologia Agenda, Operation Hurricane, and Sub-Zero. We're going to get an understanding of who we're dealing with and why they talk, when they talk, and who they talk to. Okay? Go to the next shot. Let's see this. It says, and I want this to be clear, with no disrespect to those of whom we engage in a verbal combat with, but all due respect to the benevolent creator of all things seen and unseen, known and unknown. May the tongue of dogs that wag against the firstborn of the living power cease in peace or be cut in pieces. All praises unto the most high. All right, moving along. Can we trust his motives as sincere? Who am I speaking of? I'm speaking of vocab, vocab Malone, okay? In searching exhaustingly, I have found that Vocab Malone has set forth his apology of mission, debate, and banter against Muslims, atheists, and few others, but no others like the Hebrew Israelites. He has nefariously hawked upon Hebrew Israelites and our chosen people, nationalistic viewpoints of salvation, and other things. But the mysteriously, curiously, and funny thing is, I have not witnessed he and his cohorts debate dialogue nor approach attack the so-called white jew who lambasted the messiah and christianity and have chosen people nationalistic viewpoint of salvation and other things with the same tenacity used upon as us who he calls black hebrew israelites within that scope this is what is deemed an agenda okay let's make that perfectly clear because he has not went against the so-called Jew like he's went against those brothers and sisters of Negro and Indian descent that deem themselves as the children of the book. All right? We, you can't find that. Look it up. You won't find it. The same tenacity with him nor G consciousness. Okay? And let them produce that at, before they open their mouths again against any other Israelites and Israelite camp. All right? Moving on. So... Gang, y'all, this is frozen. What is an apologetic? Okay, now let's see what this is about so you can see the agenda and understand where they're coming from. The word apologetic.
Apologetics derives from the Greek word apologia, which was originally used of speech of defense or an answer given in reply. In ancient Athens, it referred to a defense made in the courtroom as part of the normal judicial procedure. After the accusation, the defendant was allowed to refute the charges with a defense or reply, apologia. The accused would attempt to speak away, apo, away, logia, speech, the accusation. The classic example of such an apologia was Socrates' defense against the charge of preaching strange gods, a defense retold by his most famous pupil, Plato, in a dialogue called the Apologion. Okay? So now understand this. When you see him coming up against Israelites, so forth and so on, there's a misnomer according to the apology itself because they haven't went against them. This was their premise to come against Hebrew Israelites. Always has been because they didn't like the doctrine. And he's also on record stating because uh, many people came out the Christian church to follow the Israelite doctrine. All right. So now as we move on, we'll see this. And it says this right here. So we're going to get to a particular point to understand their point of views. If you deal with their point of view, you'll find that there are many things that you have to deal with. Okay? Many assumptions that you have to make and assert in order to make their claims be true. But if you deal with the Hebrew Israelite doctrine, you see it's simple. Okay? So it's time to cut them. Pass me Akim's razor. What is Akim's razor? Akim's razor is a problem-solving principle attributed to William of Akim. Okay, who was an English Franciscan friar, one of the early church fathers, and scholastic philosopher and theologian. The principle can be interpreted as stating among competing hypotheses, the one with the fewest assumptions should be selected. So what that means is, if you have to come up with a bunch of um, assumptions in order to assert your position, it may not be the truth. So when you deal with the apologia, you find that this is the case. They have too many assumptions to assert their position. So how can it be true? All right. So now we'll see this real quickly. Go to this one right here. Oh. What does this mean? If we went with the spewing of the vocab Malones of the world and the apologia, we, one, have to assume that the predestined appointment the Creator stated in the beginning about His chosen people, the nation of Israel, is now void. Two, have to assume that the Creator of all things seen and unseen, known and unknown, had a change of mind. Three, have to assume the prophets who spoke to the nation of Israel about their appointed predestined salvation spoke untruthfully. Four, have to assume that the Hellenistic writers and the people of the New Testament were not of Israelite stock. Five, have to assume that all the early church fathers were in total agreement with the viewpoint of today's apologia. And that's very important because a lot of things that they use come from particular early church fathers. But there were other church fathers in the apologia movement that did not agree with their stance. They agreed with the old way with the children of Israel being the predestined and ordained people of salvation. Okay, number six, we would have to make a plethora of assumptions based upon an apologetic viewpoint. And this is very simple, okay, dealing with the Akim's razor position. So when we understand this, right, we can see real clearly here, let's go. The Hebrew Israelites razor sharp method, okay, it's if evaluating things from Occam's razor, the principle can be in interpreted as stating among competing hypotheses, the one with the fewest assumptions should be selected. Let's go. Well, the Hebrew Israelite methodology is by all means razor sharp. Isaiah 45 verse 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. Malachi 3 and 6. For I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Make no assumptions. The world is yours. So called black Hispanic man, woman and child of Negroid and Indian descent. You are the children of Israel. 
Understand this. So salvation is yours according to the scriptures, according to the historical viewpoint. Remember, the Apologia movement is a latter movement that came from our church's fathers. When you understand the earliest church father being Peter, he had a problem with many of the teachings of those that step outside of the understanding of the church fathers before him. Okay? So we see that this is still carried on today. So he mentioned, um, before he got off, the same uh, apologetic Christian-loving brother that had some... Um, non-righteous uh, words to say uh, 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 to a divine prospect and you being watched you understand and those words that you said you didn't exemplify your Christian behavior son now understand this he mentioned something about John chapter 4 and 22 that they'll destroy it blah 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 understand and I'm gonna let the priest go ahead and anoint you with a blessing of wisdom and understanding before I show this remember the Mashiach he spoke in Galilee. Galilee was the area of Decapolis. What, it, what that is, it was the 10 cities, the 10 cities in Greek, uh, in Greek. When you understand, this is where the children of Israel were. Israel had a division, okay, from the, the Judah, from the Southern Kingdom, and the Northern Kingdom, okay? So when we see the people of the Northern Kingdom, they were in this area in which he spoke. So we got to get a clear understanding of where these people come from and what they're dealing with and what they're about. So I'm going to uh, uh, heal the rest of my minutes and let the priest add on to his, and then I'll come back with a sharper razor and leak the blood out for, for good. Go ahead, King. All right, all right, all right. Let me unlock this screen. Um, I'm going to give it back to Kansu Shesh Moon Amun. So whatever time he has remaining, Kansu, he want to hand it over to Priest Daniela. Kansu, do your thing. All right, Brother Priest, Daniela, you have the floor. Five minutes and 24 seconds have been parlayed to you, which would still give a cumulative time of 30 minutes that was awarded to the previous team of Vocab Malone and G Consciousness. Vocab Malone and G Consciousness, please concur that those minutes are being inferred over to Priest Daniela. Is that understood, Brother Vocab and Brother G Consciousness? Yes, that's cool. All right. So, Brother D Priest Daniela, are you ready to take the floor? Um, I'm ready. Just want to make sure that I could be heard. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, great. So, uh, okay, I appreciate it. So, family, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. All right, if you don't mind, I'm going to share my screen so that uh, you guys can see what it is that I'm seeing, okay? Uh, give me a second, y'all. Give me a second. Do, 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 do. All right, while he's taking that second, let me say, okay. subscribe to Joel Benjamin 528 Live and Joel Benjamin 528 and hit that like button, people. Hit okay. the like button. Now, I'm gonna, I wanna say this real quickly, right? I'm going to start off topic. I'm going to start off topic. Why am I starting off topic? Because the title of this show is dealing with salvation. But I heard a lot of other things dealing with the law. I heard some things dealing with the Gentiles. I heard some things dealing with, you know, a whole bunch of topics that was off topic of salvation. So I feel obligated to answer some of those questions since I was allowed a little extra time. And afterwards, I'm going to go into the subject matter. So the first thing that I heard was about how Israel, according to Romans 1.16, was going to go and be the, the, the heathen in all nations were going to be taught. We have to understand something in the Bible called prophecy. When you read Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, verses 64 all the way down to 68, the prophecy going all the way back to Moses was that Israel would be scattered in all nations. So it would follow that when Israel broke the commandments and that they were scattered into all nations, that when the time came for Israel to be gathered, Yes, it would start in Jerusalem, but eventually the disciples, the apostles would have to branch out because Israel is scattered into all nations. Let's get it out of the Messiah's mouth. Luke chapter 21, verse 24. This is Christ prophesying. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Who's the day? Israel. And shall be led away captive. Where? Into all nations. So when you're reading scriptures that say all nations, the assumption, which the general just went into assumptions. The assumption is that's talking about everybody in all nations. But the real understanding is, is that Israel 
is scattered into all nations. Israel was always prophesied to be scattered into all nations, pursuant to Deuteronomy 28, verses 64 on down, and Christ is reiterating that. That is why the disciples and the apostles went into different nations and taught. They were teaching the Israelites that were scattered amongst the other nations. I'll get back to that in a second. Let's continue with the next thing that was done. The next thing that was done was there was some trickery that went down, right? Uh, Bocab read Hebrews, the seventh chapter, and spoke about the old covenant as opposed to the new covenant. So he gave us a definition of what the old covenant was and why we needed a new covenant. Well, that's great, but there's one problem. Although we know what the old covenant was, and though we know that there was a need for a new covenant, what he didn't bother to tell you is who was the new covenant made with. So since he didn't bother to tell you that, let's go one chapter over to Hebrews, the eighth chapter. Let's not be deceptive. Let's be honest and transparent. Hebrews chapter 8, verses 7 through 11. Here we go. It says this, For if the first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, it's going to tell you who the them is. I'm not going to explain it. For finding fault with them, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. So when Vocab read in, in, in chapter 7, one chapter over, Hebrews 7, he read about the new covenant and how Christ ushered in the new covenant. But guess what? That new covenant is still only dealing with Israel. And I challenge him and G consciousness to show me a scripture verbatim that says the new covenant covers the Gentiles. Not an assumption. I don't want any conjecture. None of that crap. It must say the new covenant pertains to the Gentiles. Because this scripture right here is plain. I'm going to read it again. Verse 8, for finding fault with them, he saith, behold, the days come and saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. I don't see Gentile there. And with the house of Judah, because Israel was split. You had the kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Judah. And the Most High was saying, I'm going to deal with them both. Because there was a time when the Most High said the kingdom of Israel was not his people. Anyway, moving on. Verse 9, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. That was the old covenant. Because they continued not in my covenant. That was the old covenant. And I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. There it is again. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws in their mind. Wait a minute, I thought the laws were done away with. Right. I thought the laws were done away with. Anyway, and write them in their hearts. And I will be a God, I will be to them a God. Does it say to everybody? <laughs> no, it says to them. Right. This is right. a new covenant. I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me. A people. Does it say everybody's going to be his people? No, no, it right, says, right, right. they to me. Who, who is it talking about? Israel. You see that? That's right. You see that trickery that went down? That's right. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know my name. All of who? The whole world? See, y'all get tripped up off, y'all get tripped up off the English language. Y'all see the word all. You say, oh, everybody, everybody. Right, right. No, the context of all is from verse 8 to verse 10. All of Israel, not the whole world. That's the context. That's the understanding. You must understand English is an abstract language. So just because you see the word all, it doesn't necessarily follow that all means everybody on the earth. You have to get the context. The context says Israel, all of Israel. They shall not teach every man his neighbor, verse 11, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all of Israel shall know me from the least of Israel to the greatest. So that's the cut. That crap about the new covenant for everybody, that's not in the Bible. Right. Let's move on. Let's move on, okay? Now, vocab made a little slight, and I, I took offense to it. Not, not offense is I'm mad, but just because he wants to know about what do you need a priest for? Right, right. Well, Hebrews, um, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Mm -hmm. So guess what? All of Israel is priests. Is it not written in the Old Testament in the book of Deuteronomy that the Lord said he would make Israel a kingdom of priests? That's right. So you're going to have priests under the new covenant right. too. What are y'all talking right. about? But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, Amen. a peculiar people, Amen. that ye should show forth the praises of him who have mm -hmm. called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So Israel is a kingdom and a nation of priests. Mm -hmm. What we are not is high priests. Christ is the high priest. None of us claim the title of high priest, for there is one high priest, that is Christ. So you can save that nonsense. Let's move on. Then he read the scripture about the heathen being justified by faith. 
Here is Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 34. And yes, I'm off topic because they were off topic, but I got time. I'm going to get on topic in a second. Ezekiel chapter 20, verses 30 to 34. Wherefore, say, say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, are ye polluted after the manner of your fathers and commit ye whoredom after their abominations? For when ye offer your gifts, when ye make your sons to pass through the fire, ye pollute yourself with idols, even unto this day. And, I sh and shall I be inquired of you, O house of Israel, as I live, saith the Lord, mm -hmm. and that which cometh into your mind. So the Israelites had something come into their mind. Shall not be at all that ye say we shall be as the heathen right. and as the families of countries right. to serve wood and stone. You have to understand, going back to the time of the Maccabees, all the way up until today, our people have rejected the Most High God and the Bible and followed after the other nations, not just following after their gods, but our people even call themselves after the names of the other nations. Even the Apostle Paul identified himself as a Roman, even though he was an Israelite, but he acknowledged the Israelite part. You had Israelites that did not. They actually took up the customs of the heathens and were calling themselves Greeks and Romans and all those other names. Okay, so when you see about the heathen in the New Testament being justified through faith, those are Israelites following heathen customs. The Bible does not contradict itself. It's in harmony with itself. Last one that I'm going to get on topic, this one right here. Genesis 17. Y'all heard G-Con read this, right? Y'all heard him read it, right? And he came down and he read here in verses, uh, uh, he read verses 7 to about verse uh, 12 where it speaks about the covenant of circumcision. Y'all heard him say it. Y'all can go back and check it out, right? So he brought, he brought up the covenant of circumcision that was given to Abraham. There's a problem here. See, the verse, the chapter does not stop at verse 12. It continues. So let's scroll down a little bit. Let's see what else we find in the same chapter. And it's funny because I asked him this the other day. And he didn't answer me then, and he's not answering it now. So let me show y'all what else is in the same chapter where the Most High gives Ishmael the covenant of circumcision. Most I didn't give Ishmael this. Check this out, right? Verse 14, verse 15. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarah thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. So yes, Hagar had a son, but the Most I told Abraham, I'm going to give you a son from this woman too. Okay? Reading on. Yea, I will bless her and make her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is an hundred years old, and shall Sarah and Sarah that is ninety years old bear? And God said unto Abraham, uh, Abraham said unto uh, Abraham said unto God, All oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant. So yes, there was a covenant of circumcision that Ishmael fell under, but there was another covenant of the child that was going to come out, which was Isaac, that the Most High did not make with Ishmael or anybody else that came from Abraham. And I and his seed after him, verse twenty. As for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him. The Most High didn't promise him salvation. The Most High gave him a blessing. And will make him fruitful. That's the blessing. Mm -hmm. Not salvation. Make him fruitful. And will multiply him exceedingly. That's the blessing. Not salvation. Twelve princes shall he beget. And I will make him a great nation. That's the blessing. Not salvation. But, 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 but my covenant will I establish with Isaac. So Isaac was getting something extra that Ishmael was not getting. Which Sarah shall bear thee uh, unto thee at this set time next year. So there was a covenant established that was going to come through Isaac. That was then passed down to Jacob. That's that was then passed down to the Israelites. And that's where salvation comes from. That covenant does not pertain to anybody outside of Israel. We just read it in Hebrews, the eighth chapter. That's right. The new covenant, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. This is a new covenant right here. But I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, period. Now, let's get to the topic. Salvation. <laughs> We have to define what salvation is. So I simply did a simple Google search on salvation, and I thought this definition was pretty apropos. So let's look at the first definition of salvation. The first definition says salvation means preservation or deliverance from harm, ruin, or loss. Remember that. Preservation or deliverance from harm, 
ruin, and loss. Is there a scripture that has the word salvation in it, right? That speaks about this, pres preserving anyone or someone from harm, ruin, or loss. Let's see what we find here. Luke chapter 1, verses 67 to 77. Here we go. As, and his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. So we got the context now. Let's be clear. This is talking about Israel. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. So who is his people? Israel. And hath raised up a horn of salvation for us. Possessive pronoun. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us. Who is the us? Israel in the house of his servant David and have spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies. Not everybody. It says we. Who's the we? Israel. That we should be saved from our enemies. What's the definition of salvation? Preservation or deliverance from harm, ruin, or loss. Who did the prophets say that was to? Israel. That we, we, not everybody, should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us to perform the mercy promised to our fathers. Our is a possessive pronoun. Who is the our fathers? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the succession line of the covenants. And to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we be delivered out of the hand of our enemies. There it is again. What's the definition of salvation? Preservation or deliverance from harm, ruin, or loss. Who is this passage talking about? Israel, the God of Israel, hath visited and redeemed us. Read, I'm reading on. And that thou would, that he, verse 74, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people knowledge of salvation is salvation again unto his people who is god's people the israelites by the remission of their sins this stuff is not hard man let's move on let's move on now let's deal with that whole thing about christ coming right let's deal with the whole thing about christ coming right now uh let me see i needed uh is this it right here no, I'm going to, uh, no, you know what? I missed something. I missed something. Um, Let's come back to salvation again. I don't want to get ahead of myself now. So we, we covered the first part. Deliverance from harm, ruin or loss. We covered that in Luke chapter 1, verses 67 to 77. We have to cover the second part of this definition, which is deliverance from sin. Now, I heard vocab say sin, 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 all through his presentation. But what is sin? We have to find that out first, right? Let's find out what sin is. This is the book of, uh, let me just make sure I got it right here. This is the book of 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. This is the biblical definition of sin. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is the transgression of the law. So if salvation means deliverance from sin and sin is the transgression of the law, now we have to ask ourselves some questions. Who was the law given to? Was it given to everybody or a specific people? Well, you know what? We're going to deal with Occam's razor. We're going to see what the Bible says. Let's go to the book of Leviticus chapter 26, verse 46. These are the statutes and judgments and laws which the Lord made between him and the children of Israel in the Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses. Let's review. Salvation means deliverance from sin. Sin is transgression of the law, according to 1 John 3 and 4. The only people that had the law was the Israelites. So guess who the sinners were? It were the Israelites. But somebody might say, oh, that's not enough. That's not enough. Let's get one more. Psalms 147, verse 19 and 20. Uh -oh. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Right? He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise you the Lord. Four minutes. Excellent. Good. I'm, I'm almost done. His statutes refer to the laws. Okay. That was given to Israel. The rest of the nations, they knew nothing about the Most High's laws. The Most High wasn't dealing with them on that level. But somebody might still jump up and say, that's the only 
Old Testament. You know, the Christians are funny. Yeah. That's the Old Testament. Let's get out the New Testament. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 3, verse 1 through 3. What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, because chiefly, chiefly, because unto them were committed the oracles of God. That's all I need. Unto them were committed the oracles of God. So we can now review. We can now review. Salvation. Deliverance from sin. 1 John 3 and 4 says sin is transgression of the law. Leviticus 26, 46 says the Israelites were the only ones that had the law. The prophet David agreed that the Israelites were the only ones that had the law. The apostle Paul says the oracles of God were only given to the Israelites. So the Israelites were clearly the sinners that went against God's laws. So they were the ones that needed salvation. Now somebody might say, well, the other nations too. Let's jump down. Romans 3, let's jump down to verse 19. Watch this. Romans chapter 3, verse 19. Now we know that whatsoever things the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law. So therefore, the only people that were under the law, pursuant to Leviticus 26 and 46, were the Israelites. The rest of the nations, the Most High said in Psalms 147, 19 and 20, he ain't deal with them when it comes to the laws. So guess who the sinners were? The sinners were the Israelites. We were the ones that needed salvation because we're the ones that sinned, which the biblical definition of sin is to transgress the laws. So we were the ones that needed Christ to come and die for us. The other nations did not transgress the laws because the Most High never dealt with you like that. Okay. Now, Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Neither is thou salvation in any other, for there is none other under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So Christ came to give salvation to Israel, right? Real quick, let's let's prove that. Let's prove that, right? Let's prove that. Acts chapter 5, 29 and 31. Let's go. I'm going to end with this. Okay, now my, my, my screen is not working. Uh, Joel, put it up on your screen real quick. Because now my computer is not working. Hmm? Um, Yeah. Now I want I want them to be able to see it. Okay, I want them to be able to see it. Here it is. You can see it on my. You can see it on your screen. Oh, it's up on yours. Yeah, it should be. All right. All right. Good. Here we go. Acts chapter five, verse twenty-nine to thirty-one. And I'm going to yield the floor with this because I know I've been going on and on. I probably still have more time, but that's okay. The disciples walked with Christ for three years. Right. He was teaching them. He was teaching them in parables amongst everybody else but then on the side he was actually breaking things down to them so i would think if anybody had a good understanding outside of, all right if anybody had a good understanding outside of christ of what his mission was it would be the apostles let's see what the apostles said christ's mission is watch this acts 5 29 verse 31 then peter and the other apostles answered and said we ought to obey god rather than man that's why we ain't christians no more we're gonna believe the bible the god of our fathers raised up jesus whom he slew and hanged on a tree him have god exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, savior, salvation, savior, salvation, to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. I think that's pretty clear. I'm going to yield. Priest Daniela yields the floor. I'm going to yield the floor back over to the MC, Brother Joel Benjamin, as both sides have spoken and been given 30 minutes each. I'm going to give an opportunity for Brother Vocab and Brother Laron to respond and we'll have an, um, an open dialogue between both parties to be able to discuss what was uh, what was brought to the table because I know that uh, Brother Hashar also will have some things to express. So because they were the affirmative, they'll have an opportunity to respond to the last um, the last things that were stated. So, Brother Vocab and Brother Laron, you both have the floor. Um, I'll give you uh, 10 minutes. Right on, man. Thanks. Uh, let me bring up a few things that Daniela brought up. He said that uh, in Luke 21, 24, it talks about Israelites to be led to all nations. And so that's what we got to understand. But there he's taking nations as actual Gentile nations. But other times when it says nations, he wants us to think that na nations there actually means Israelites scattered among the nations. The similar tactic happens when folks uh, say Gentiles actually means scattered Israelites in certain contexts. The interesting thing is there's a Greek word for scattered. It's used in Acts 11.19, among other places. It's dia scorpiza. Dia scorpiza. That word means scattered. 
And there's a Greek word for Israelite as well. You can see it in Acts 7.37. So if the Bible meant to say scattered Israelites, why didn't it say scattered Israelites? Because there's two Greek words that could say that instead of just saying um, Gentiles and confusing everybody until one West was invented. Or it could say Hellenistes. That word actually means Hellenized Israelites. There is a word already doing this. But instead, they're going to ask us to be gullible and trust them instead of lexicons and believe that Gentiles really mean scattered Israelites and Hellenists. Uh, and, and, and so we got some issues there. Not only that, but he, he brought up, show me a place where the new covenant pertains to Gentiles. Well, there's a bunch of places. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 4 through 6. Romans chapter 9, verses 24 through 29. Revelation 5, 9. Revelation 7, 9. Acts 26, 22 through 29. I want to stop there, actually, and actually look at that one real quick if I can. Paul is before accusers, and he's before Agrippa here and Felix. Look what he says to these folks in verse 23, that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and that she should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. So he's speaking to a, a mixed audience here. In fact, it appears uh, 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 Herod's probably an Edomite. Agrippa's, a, an Is uh, Agrippa's a, just a nor normal Gentile. So I don't know if there's any Israelites around. He's saying unto the people, that be his people, and the Gentiles. See, there's a distinction. People, Gentiles. If they're really, these Israelites are really uh, the same thing, then why is he making two there? And it would actually confuse these people hearing it because they're going to think he means Gentiles. Now I'm going to prove to you and show to you he really means real Gentiles. Look at verse 28. Then Agrippa said to Paul, almost thou persuadest me to be a what? A Christian. Danya Allah, why aren't you a Christian again? Because Paul apparently was trying to convince Agrippa to be one, but you don't want to be one. I guess Paul might have to convince you too. Verse 29, Paul said, I would to God, now look at it, look at his desire, look at his wish. I would to God that not only thou, not just you, Agrippa, but also all that hear me this day. That means everybody listen to me right now. I wish you would also be a Christian. Now you think he was only speaking to Israelites? It doesn't work. We know there was Roman centurions there. We know that Felix was not an Israelite. And yet Paul's saying, I want you to be like me, except for these chains. And that's just one place. There's a whole bunch of others, and that's why I lit, lit them off before I got to Acts. But I have a couple things also I want to address in Hashar's presentation. Before I get to that, let me make sure g -Con has a chance before I can look at Hashar, right. what he said and didn't say. Go ahead, g -Con. Uh, uh, you know, just a lot of fallacious and a lot of errors that the brother made real quick. That's why I can't wait till we open up for questions. Uh, first of all, uh, Isaiah 49 and 6. I wonder if um, the brother priest, Daniela, recognized this as being salvation, too, since he spoke on it. Paul spoke on this in Romans chapter, uh, Acts chapter 13 and 47, and then related back to, it goes back to Isaiah 49 and 6. Let me read that real quick. Let's see if this is the same type of salvation, priest, Daniela. Watch what it says. It says, and he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob. Watch what he says, key in. And you will agree that the tribes of Jacob consist of all the sons of Jacob. Those are the tribes, right? So he's talking about all of Jacob here. And watch this, what he says. And to restore the preserved of Israel. The preserved is out of the tribes of Jacob because Jacob is Israel. Right? Now watch what he says. I will also That's give right. thee for a light. Gentiles, <laughs> that thou mayest be my salvation until the end of the end of ends of the earth. Uh, now, for y'all that are listening in, it is clear that the same salvation that priest Daniel is talking about, which he wrote down, right, is saying that he's going to do for the, the Gentiles. There are three people that are listed here. There are the tribes of Jacob, right, which consists of all of Israel. There's the preserved out of Israel, which consists of probably the priest or whatever the case may be, and the rulers. And then you also have, guess what? The Gentiles, three people there. So guess what he says? That his salvation may be to the ends of the world. Do you understand that, brother? That's clear. I mean, easy breakdown. There's more cuts to cut you up with. See you on vocab. All right, so on Hashar, there's only a few scriptures mentioned towards the end, and that wasn't really the bulk of what he did. So even though the question is, what is the biblical view Five of salvation? Minutes. Instead, what he wanted to answer is, what is the truth about vocab Malone? That's really what his presentation was, even though it really wasn't truth. In the beginning, uh, he keeps on making a mistake. Even though he said he did careful research, he keeps on calling uh, us apologia. 
it's apologetics. Apologetics is the art and science of defending the Christian faith. And apologists are people who practice this. Apologists practice apologetics. Apologia is a radio and TV show I was on once. That's their name. And mentioning, let me mention about apology, in fact, which, which is a not what we're talking about when we talk about apologetics, apologia is the name of a TV show which comes out of First Peter 3.15. He mentioned how Peter opposed these folks but and, and said how apologetics was a later enterprise. Ironically, Peter is the one who mentions apologetics in First Peter 3.15. Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Be ready always to give an answer. If you stop and look up at the Greek there, it says apologia. So Peter opposed something he was writing about, I guess. Then we're going to jump over, and they said they didn't, we didn't attack the white Jews. Well, speaking of apologia, there's a guy in apologia named Jeff Durbin. I've done multiple shows with Jeff Durbin on proving Christ is Messiah from Isaiah 53. Not only that. We got a guy in SOG that you guys haven't met yet named Nissan Cran that I work with, and he does these things out in Phoenix called Isaiah 53 Tables. Not only that, but I got my boy Tony Ray in SOG from Hazakim, and all they do is apologetics and a messianic tick to Hebrews, and they even go to Jerusalem and do this. Not only that, I've worked with Michael Brown, who's one of the biggest guys in this field, answering Jewish objections to Jesus. I work with Jews for Jesus, Chosen People Ministries, and also Jewish Voice Ministries. So the idea of attacking white Jews, and even the phraseology of white Jews is silly, because not all Jews look like Woody Harrelson. I'm sorry, Woody Allen, wrong Woody. They don't all look like Woody Allen. And so saying white Jews doesn't make sense, because doesn't what, what about the Mizraim? What about the folks in Yemen? Those aren't white Jews. What about the Ethiopians? Those aren't white Jews. We still would do apologetics to them as well. And then there's just simple facts of mistakes of, of historical. This is the last one I'll drop. Occam, he said he was an early church father. Occam died in 1347. The early church period is said to end around 500. Occam was not an early church father. All right, LeBron, go ahead. Two minutes. Right, right. And then also seconds. Also, too, he made mention of uh, Matthew. Let's look at well, he didn't make mention of this, but let's let's look at Matthew twenty-one and forty-three. And this brother is this brother just I don't know what he was doing in that, but uh, I can't wait till these questions come out. Matthew Matthew twenty-one and forty-three. Therefore, say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Now, here it is. <laughs> He's talking to, right, the priest, Israel, right, telling them the kingdom of God is going to be taken from them, given to somebody, bringing forth the fruit. So it's clear that that was not talking about Israel, that God was going to add other people to this group just as well. He said the Lord changed not. Well, the Lord don't change when it comes concerning his promises, but if you don't fulfill it, what, what the contract is, he will change some things in the contract. How do we know that? You said the Lord changed not, right? Well, he took the priesthood away, seeing that the priesthood has changed, there's a necessity to change the law. And then not only that, it says also that he uh, uh, changed from one diet to another diet in the, in the Old Testament. It said he changed from a diet of non-meat to a diet of meat. So when you say that the Lord changed not, you better get that together because when we say we deal with textual criticism and we deal, we apolog we're uh, apologists, then you, that should let you know. We're bringing that. We're dealing with all of that. Not not that with Tassels. Tassels was not dropped at Mount Sinai. Tassels, that law was dropped later. One minute. So we see differences. One in minute. The covenants are progressive, and Yahweh has the right to alter how he wants it to be carried out. I'm right. Good, then, then also, when you deal with Jeremiah 31, Jeremiah 31, it's clear that in, in Texas and Isaiah that he said he, he was going to have a covenant for the people of Israel. And also, guess who else was going to be in that covenant? The people that was Gentiles. You can see that in Genesis chapter 17. I brought that out. Whether or not if you try to go below or whatever, the sign of the token was still in their flesh. And guess what? They will be partakers uh, according to the promise, as we see in Galatians just as well, because Galatians is clear on that. that the Gentiles will be fellow heirs and partakers of the promise. How is that? Because it was preached unto Abraham, and then we've seen Abraham actually talk about concerning the yes, land. Sir. to him. So, you know, we're going to end on that note, but I can't wait till these questions open up on y'all, man. Good job, LeBron. Good job. All right, that's time. Yes, yeah. All right, Kansu. Yes, sir. Yeah. As we go back to that minor Kansu. I'm really enjoying it, man. These are intelligent brothers. Some intelligent brothers, man. 
yeah, um, yeah, yeah. They no joke. This this is going pretty good. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna turn it over to Priest Daniela and uh, Brother Hashar. You do have the uh, fair right to give light to any discrepancies in their rebuttal. That's what you have right to do, and any discrepancies to their rebuttal. And then from that point, we will segue into questions and answers where it is an open dialogue between all four members. So, Priest Daniela and my brother Hashar, you do have the floor. Um, you have 10 minutes. You up? Okay. Don't get over there. Well, um, firstly, I just want to say that uh, their retort back was garbage, simply because I used purposefully the term apologia for the radio station in which Vocab Malone was on because this is where he spewed most of his venom at. And he spewed most of his venom there and went on and on, further on, attacking Hebrew Israelites. That's why I personally use apologia as opposed to apologetics. That's number one. So that was garbage is what he said. Number two, dealing with everything that, that was brought out, if you listen to their speak, first of all, just go, and, and also dealing with um, uh, 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 Oakham's Razor. When I spoke the term, early church father, I was speaking about the terms dealing with people in the church, Francis, Franciscan friars, those that went into the Dominican Republic, etc., etc. that attack. I was using that for that term of reference and terminology so that the people of layman's man can understand that, you know, and deal with it from there. Okay, a lot of people that are Hebrew Israelites uh, 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 of, of so-called Latin or Spanish descent, they understand the word friar, et cetera, et cetera, and Franciscan, et cetera. So that's why that term was used. Okay. Now, the other thing is when you deal with the basis just from a historical standpoint, I mean, a lot of things that's being said on your end is just futile due to the one point. The kingdom of Israel was divided. It was divided in the southern and northern kingdom where the most high, where the creator states, he states profusely that the other half was deemed not part of, uh, of Israel. They were cut off from the nation of Israel. So every time when you read certain terms, as the priest brought out, even, even Paul calling himself a Roman, et cetera, et cetera, this is what Israelites did. And then the thing that vocab also did very coyly to say, I speak to uh, um, the Israelites in Ethiopia and the Is uh, uh, here, the Jews here. What I'm speaking about is the vehemency is how you come after Hebrew Israelites. You have not done that with the so-called white man that calls himself a Jew. You have not done that with the same fervor. If you can produce the evidence, then do so. Produce at least four radio shows that you have came at him with the same fervor that you did at Hebrew Israelites. Produce four videotapes of the same fervor that you came at Hebrew Israelites with. You can't do that, and that's what I'm speaking of. And so you come with that forked tongue and that spirit, and I told you don't do that, and I told you that in private, okay? Because our hands can reach out there. Just believe that. This is deeper than what you think on a deeper, on a serious level. Okay, so I'm just trying to don't come with the coyness. Just be upfront and honest. Don't say, well, I talked to this one on this show or that one on that show. You have not dealt with the so-called white man that calls himself a Jew on that level. Okay, so, I mean, it's not really much for me to say. I just want to, the questions and answers to go back and forth with the scriptures because it's, it's, it's actually easy. It makes no sense. You know, when you go to Revelations, just within itself, uh, Revelations, the, the last chapter, the last book, it tells you about the keeping of the commandments. And it tells you who shall enter into the gates, etc. So, I mean, again, you just deal in a certain manner that's just too coy, you know? And, and I've, t I've spoken to you about that in private and how you deal, you know? That's it. All right. Um, oh, my bad. Hold on. Give me one second, y'all. One second, one second. Let me unmute myself. Uh, wait a minute. Um, give us a second, y'all, because Joel left the room. Um, stop the time for one second, y'all, console, because we have to mute this computer. He left the room. All right. Stop the time for one second. Oh, you just walk back in. Back, 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 back. These are the ills of my life. All right, Joel, six minutes, 19 seconds. All right. So, um, first of all, I just want to say this, right? In a short amount of time that we're, we're having this discussion, and even with the question and answers, a lot of things are going to fly out that's going to be said that's absolutely felonious and false. But because brothers are fast talking a lot of times, it's going to sound like it's truth, but it's not. Now, Vocab said he had a whole bunch of scriptures in the New Testament that say the New Covenant applies to the Gentiles. 
but he didn't read them, right? That's the first thing. The second thing is, I will tell you one chapter that he did mention. He did mention Romans, the ninth chapter. He did mention Romans, the ninth chapter. So what I want to do is I want to share my screen, and I want to go to Romans, the ninth chapter. Romans chapter 9, verse 1, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great heaviness and continuous sorrow in my heart. For I could wish myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites. So the subject is the Israelites, again in the Bible. To whom pertaineth, and the word pertains means belongs. The adoption. The adoption pertains to the Israelites. Doesn't matter where you read it, in Galatians, Ephesians, when you're reading about the adoption, it pertains to the Israelites. That's what Paul is saying. And the glory. What is the glory? The glory is the kingdom of heaven. Daniel 7, 18, so forth and so on. That pertains to the Israelites. And the covenants. The covenants pertains to the Israelites. And the giving of the law, which I showed when I was reading before. And the service of God, which is the priesthood and the keeping of the temple. And the sacrifice, sacrifice and so forth. And the promises were made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right? All those things pertain to Israel. Now, verse 6, which I heard him fumble and bumble when he was on Joel's show last week. Now, as though the word of God have not taken effect, but they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Now, the Most High has a chosen nation, which is Israel, but a lot of Israelites are not part of that elect number. Not all Israel is a part of that elect number. Some of Israel is going to be destroyed because they're not keeping the Most High's commandment. So amongst Israel, the Most High has an elect Israel is his elect nation pursuant to the Old Testament, but then amongst Israel, the Most High has an elect. You can read one scripture to reference that is Revelation, the seventh chapter. So the covenants pertain to Israel. Now, I know they want to jump down to the later verses where it says not the Jews, but also the Gentiles, but I'm going to wait for them to pull that. For, listen, I'm giving it to you. I'm going to wait for you to pull it first, and then I'm going to take it back from you, and I'm going to show you that you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Furthermore, Isaiah 49 and 6 that he quoted. He wrote, he read, let's read it when he read. Isaiah 49 and 6. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob, to resort and preserve of Israel. I will also give thee as a light to the Gentiles, that they, thou mayest be my salvation to the end of the earth. We already read when I was going before, salvation was only promised to Israel. So, in order for this verse to make sense and not contradict the rest of the Bible, those Gentiles have to be talking about Israel. But that's me saying it. Let's go to a chapter before Isaiah 49. Let's see what we see. Isaiah the 11th chapter, starting from verse 10. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles see. So the Christians say, see, see, Gentiles. And his rest shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand a second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set an ensign for the nations. What nations? And all those nations where Israel is going to be recovered from. And shall assemble the outcast of Israel, because you had Israelites that were outcasts, because they were scattered in these other nations, worshiping their God. So they were Gentiles. He shall gather the, assemble the outcast of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah. From where? the four corners of the earth. So when you talk about the four corners of the earth or the uttermost parts of the earth, it's an assumption that that's talking about the Gentiles. But actually, again, when you read Deuteronomy 28, verses 64 on down, right here in Isaiah 11, verses 10 to 13, also in Luke chapter 21, verse 24 on down, you see time and time again, James chapter 1, verse 1, you see time and time again that Israel, is scattered in the four corners of the earth. So you have no proof that the people that are gathered from the uttermost parts of the earth are actually the Gentiles themselves, the natural Gentiles. You have no proof of that. What I'm saying is that if you follow the scriptures, rightly divide the word of truth, if you follow the scriptures correctly, you're going to clearly see that Israel is scattered to the four corners of the earth and Christ was never prophesied to come to the other nations. Christ was never prophesied to come to save the other nation. The Bible says, real quick, Romans, let me get this real quick. Romans chapter 11, let's go right down to verse 26. Let's get right to the point. Romans 11, verse 26. All right? Um, and so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer. Who is that? Christ. And he shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them. Who's the them? Jacob. Yes, this stuff is clear. This is my covenant unto them when I will take away 
their sins, not the whole world's sins, not everybody's sins, not the Gentile sins, but the most I said, Christ was coming to turn away ungodliness from Jacob and take away their sins. The Bible does not contradict itself. Time and time again, 50 Israel, seconds. 50 Israel seconds. Is the one, yes, sir. Israel is the one that transgressed the laws. Israel is the ones that left the covenant. So the Most High had to send Christ to come down and die for them so they could be adopted back into the covenant. This has nothing to do with the Gentiles. And Israel was scattered amongst the Gentiles, keeping Gentile customs. This is not hard, and it cannot be resolved in a two hour debate. But it's clear that they said that we don't know the Bible. Are we showing that we do? We ain't playing no games. The floor is yours, Consul. Much respect. Much respect, man. Well, well done, brothers. Um, uh, it was 20 seconds left, but of course, uh, brother uh, Daniela yielded the floor. Um, we're going to open up dialogue for a question and answer. What I would request, because this gets kind of ambiguous sometimes, um, because everybody is passionate and concise, and sometimes you're going to get, uh, um, you know, a little heated. I think it's natural. Me personally. As a moderator, I'm not going to be one to berate a person because they're passionate about what they believe in or a point that they're trying to make. So what I'm asking the participants is to be conscientious of a person's passion and allow a question to be answered in its context. If there is a fallacy or anything of that, please make note of it and I will acknowledge it. And if we have to move on to another question, if we have to just say, hey, it's not gonna be answered, so be it, so we can have a flow, because there's gonna be passion. You can already hear it in everybody's diatribe because they truly believe in what they're speaking on, and that's rightfully so. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So I'm gonna open the floor to question and answers um, due to the fact that the Priest Daniela and Brother Hashar, uh, responded to the affirmative. I will yield the first set of questions to Priest Daniela and Brother Hashar, and then Brother Vocab and Brother um, G Consciousness can answer, and then they may retort, I mean, they may follow up after they retort with a subsequent question. Hey, so, can we show our faces? I don't know, uh, nobody showing their face. Uh, who can you now see, Brother Vocab? I can see you and me and GCOM, but I can't see anybody okay. else. Oh, okay. I see everybody. I don't know. Yeah, that's that's on your end. Um, vocab. Yeah, I see everybody, brother Vocab. Everybody's showing their faces. Locked out too. That's why I'm blocked. Yeah, I see. I see everybody too. This as well too. Oh, I don't know why I can't. I can't see anybody. Okay. Now hold up a second. While, let me say this. While I was going, y'all, some of y'all had y'all faces blocked out. So we don't block your face out no more. And then say that we blocking ours, please. All right, because I saw your, your your face was blocked while I was going. I know you were searching stuff and stuff, but you can't complain about it if you was doing it while I was going. I'm just saying. Go ahead, Joel. No, when I'm speaking, <laughs> when I'm speaking, I unblock my face when someone else is speaking. Nah, that yo, it, 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 it's just it's just your stuff is it, is messing up. So everybody's Stop face is being shown now. Come on, let's. Go. Who's going to ask their questions first? Go ahead, Kansu. Say it again. Yes, sir, Brother uh, Priest Daniela, Brother Hashar. Respectfully, you have the right to the first set of questions. One at a time, you can ask a question. And then uh, they will retort, of course, being Vocab Malone and Brother G Consciousness. And I'm sure that they have questions. I just ask that those questions be asked directly and within context so that we have a flow and exchange of questions. All right. Um, well, I mean, my my first uh, question would go to the first assertion that I made earlier, just asking uh, G Conscious, I mean, no, uh, uh, Vocab Malone, how come he hasn't had the same uh, attack on um, the so-called white man that has the views, a nationalistic views of um, them being the chosen people, everybody else being Goyim, and... Um, you know, uh, the, the, the the bashing or lambasting of, of, of the Messiah, etc. How come you haven't had the same attack or the same approach as you had on Hebrew Israelites? Stanley Meyer, Jews for Jesus on Periscope. Look it up. Jeff Cran, Jewish Believers in Jesus on Urban Theologian Radio. Look it up. Randy Newman, Witnessing to Jewish Folks. 
uh, on Urban Theologian Radio. Look it up. Jeff Durbin proving that Jesus is the Messiah in the Old Testament on Backpack Radio. Look it up. Tony Ray from Hazakim, uh, how to do hip hop apologetics to Jewish. Uh, Jewish folks, uh, look that one up. And as a bonus, look up on Periscope uh, uh, with Hebrew uh, PhD student Ryan Stevens on who were the true people of Israel. You didn't answer the question. The thing yeah, is, I, just said I had to produce some examples. I gave you more than four. Let and me, not only that, but what? Not only that, but I, I could I could go longer. What relevance does it have? I mean, why not just instead hey, yo, of don't interrupt me again, about it? Man. Yo, tell them don't interrupt hold me on, again. Hold on, hold on, Go, go, go I just ahead. Asked go ahead. Yo, listen. I said you didn't answer the question. Let me finish my sentence, all right? Don't interrupt me again, all right? I'm not going to interrupt you. I'm going to let you speak. You didn't answer the question based upon this. Not the arguing of the doctrine, but the thing based upon them being Israelites. You argue with Hebrew Israelites that they are not the children of the book. You argue with and say that we are not the children of the promise. That the blacks and the Spanish, they're not Hebrew Israelites. You have not argued like that with them. You may have argued the doctrine, but not the premise of them. How could they prove that they're Jews? You never argued that. That was the exhaustive research that was looked upon. You've never argued that principle. But with Israelites, you have always argued that principle. Show me one debate where I've argued with the Hebrew Israelite as a debate topic. Are you actually Every Israelite? Every goddamn one you do. Every one you name do. One. No. You have your name ass one. Why, how could y'all be Israelites? How do no, people no. here? Show then me you a debate. There were Greeks. Over you. Then you mentioned different people that were in those areas. Every no, no, one I'm, you do. Give me a debate where that was the topic of the debate. What I'm saying is this. You have presented that within the dialogue that you had with Hebrew Israelites. You have oh, done that, and you've made fun of Israelites while doing so. But you have never done that with the white man that calls himself a Jew. So therefore, you have a, an agenda. You are not dealing rightfully. You have a goddamn agenda, man. Number one, you keep on changing what you're asking me. Number two, not all Jews are white. I'm, not I'm telling what you, how you operate hey, and how you deal. Give him, give him opportunity to answer, us, uh, brother. Us, uh, not, I don't know why you keep on saying white Jews when not all Jews are Ashkenazi, if that's what you refer to. So I don't understand why you keep on bringing that up. But I mean, why not just deal with the doctrine? Let's just say what you're saying is true and accurate. It doesn't change the truthfulness of anything that I'm saying. And when somebody says that the Seminole Indians or the tribe of Reuben, you better believe I'm going to question that because it's shaky because you have the ancestors to the Seminoles on a different tribe, Gad, than the descendants, which makes no sense. And when, when I got these types of issues on the chart, you better believe I'm going to question it. Have you even ever met a Seminole Indian who's a Hebrew Israelite? You know what I'm saying? I mean, of course they're going to question that. That's the nature of the discussion. Why am I not allowed to question? And they're, Seminoles okay. aren't even saying they're from the tribe of Reuben. That's somebody else putting okay. it on them. Okay. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Okay. No one has ever said that you can't question the doctrine. I, I mean, that, that that's common sense. Nobody's saying that you can't question the Israelite doctrine. The question is the vehemency of how you attack the people of saying that they're not the children of the book or the children of the promise. You have never done so with the others that you have engaged in. So whether I say he's a white Jew, whether I say he's a Jew from Mars, well, I say you have never did it like you have done it with the brothers you engage with. There's a problem there that's very suspect, and it's, and it's documented that you have dealt that way. And please believe, this is not the last of running you over, okay? Because the, all that documentation will be presented to show exactly how you have dealt and exactly where you are coming from. It is a lot more than just the doctrine. What you do not like is that the so-called black, Hispanic, man, woman, and child of Negro and Indian descent have stood up and took a position of claim, a stake of claim, and a stake of claim to say, we are the children of the promise and of the book. And those who have punished us and attacked us shall be punished and shall be chastised according to the word of the book. That's the deal that you have a problem with, man. Ashar, if you want to deny your ethnic heritage, that's on you. But if you want to claim salvation is by works, that's the main debate I have. Most of the debates I have center What's on that issue. Heritage? What's my ethnic heritage? Uh, it's, I mean, it's almost certainly likely it's not what you claim it is. I mean, how do you know? How do you know? How do you know? How do you know? What's my ethnic 
heritage. That's what, what I'm saying. So you're very suspect. Even in your approach now, you can't answer with, uh, uh, with a straight lace of uh, uh, spirit simply because of how you think and how you feel. So what you're doing is exposing yourself and your thought process and your dealing with Israelites, man. That's what you're showing. And so you talk about hold on, hold on, hold on, y'all. Before y'all continue, G Khan, your your screen is off again, G Khan. Your screen is off again. I don't see him. He's muted. Yeah, but his screen is off. Right. G Khan. Sure. All right. When when we come back, oh, we're gonna well, do that. Go I'm going to let Danielle get his question in, but the bottom line is this. You haven't answered the question because I asked you about the premise of the attack upon the people. You know what I'm saying? Doctrine is not, that's nothing. You know what I'm saying? Because you believe that you're right in the garbage that you're spewing. But the scriptures tell you exactly what's what and there is there, what's going on. You understand? Like, for example, you bring up a lot of early church fathers, but you know that the early church fathers even had a, a, a debate with the Pauline doctrine and the Johannian doctrine. Hey, Star, quote me. Name one time I brought up early. Quote, hey, Hashar, quote me one time I brought up. Let me ask you this. Quote me. No, no, no. Quote me one time. Quote the early Pauline doctrine and the Johannian doctrine. Avoided bringing up the church fathers. Quote me one debate with the Hebrews like where I brought up early church fathers. Don't worry. It's 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 not done with the video. Listen, listen, it's not done with the video. I throw pebbles, then rocks, then boulders, then I drop the building on your ass. And that's what's coming. I've never done it on purpose. Your agenda will be stopped. It's going to be destroyed. You understand? That's it, man. You right. So char- you full of shit in the world, but no, you full of shit. You, uh, you, you, that's it. You You're emailed evil, me about you evil old bastard. You are evil old damn bastard. I'm not gonna sit up here and talk to you lovely and sweet. That's not what I'm built for. I'm built for other things. I'm built to run your ass over and squeeze the blood out you. Okay. Well, it ain't happening this time. It ain't happening this time. That we stand strong. Understand that. Okay. Hey. Is this how the debate's going to be? Can someone quiet him down? You are swarming. It's a global warming in Phoenix. Understand? Right, right. And it's coming to you, man, because you're full of shit, you little demon. you got so, to so right, email me. talked about yeah, the spirit of Christ. Context. Okay, yeah, is that the, I, 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 that the spirit of Christ? No, it's fine, Lord. bro. It's fine. You took the Lord's name in vain. You violated the fourth commandment, and you're going to tell me you operate in the spirit of Christ. I said, God damn, the Lord's name ain't God. See how much I, is the Lord's name God? Yeah, uh, is his name good? Hey, uh, no, you it's not God. Hey, uh, and also, go here, bro, Paul, Paul, I, and Paul yeah, said what? Yeah. He said, though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge. Understand that. Go ahead, go ahead. Listen, uh, hold on, hold on, uh, uh, brother Cox. Come on, man. I don't want to hear none of that, man. And you, and, and, and you talking about saying that to me. You should have said that. To go ahead, G. Cox. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, my fault. I had uh, ran upstairs to go get my charge to my phone, but. Uh, I just want you to know about that, cause you know that y'all was already talking. Yo, y'all live. Go ahead. Go ahead. You got it, man. Yeah, go ahead, brother G Con. Like I said before, we're gonna have passion. That that's gonna happen. I don't I don't think it's fair sometimes. Um, uh, brother Vocab, you handled yourself well. Brother brother Hashar handled yourself well. Everyone's handling based on their nature, and that's just what it is. We're, we're talking a volatile subject, and people are gonna be passionate about it. So that's okay. Um, it's it's still within context. You're going to have arguments. I'm sure vocab is not has is not new to this. Uh, and brother Hashar has been brother Hashar since I've known him. So it's okay. So brother Gcon, um, uh, go ahead, brother. Right, I, 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 think, I think basically we should just keep it informational and then stop really the personal wait, attacks. Um, wait, I'm sorry, Kansu. You're not letting Danielle go? No, no, no. It's their turn. It's their turn. Oh, it's their turn. oh I'm sorry. My last point. Oh, you had a last point. Yeah, my last point. <clears throat> they can hear me? Yeah, they can hear you. Well, this is my last point to y'all. I know you, I, and, 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 and thank you, Consul. I, I respect what you're saying, you know, about the, the, the energy, you know, and things of that nature and letting it be brought forth. But you have to understand this. This is the same thing I tried to tell you, not, you, you knuckleheads before. This one thing. Any, 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 any doctrine that a man is connected to, the emotion attaches, therefore, that's part of that man. If you go, again, I said to y'all before, if you go ahead and go talk to a Buddhist, okay, and tell them something, what's wrong with Buddhism and how they deal with it, you're talking about that person connected to that doctrine and they're going to respond in such a manner. This is not no doctrine to where it's like you read the Bible and the verse. No, this is our nationality, man. 
This, uh, this is our people's nationality. This is why we are the only people that were that called labels, labels given by our conquerors. The so-called white man that called himself a Jew, he, he, he wasn't labeled that, he took that label. Understand this. So when you go in the scriptures, who are the people that were gonna forget their name? Huh? Why is a black man calls himself black? Why is a so-called Hispanic man calls himself Hispanic? Or a so-called native calls himself an Indian? Huh? These are labels that were given unto them. The white man that calls himself a Jew, he didn't forget his goddamn name. He knew about his conversion from the Khazar Empire. Huh? What about this, man? So don't tell me how, about what's going on and let's keep it this way. Man, I'm keeping his livelihood. It's about our people. It's the essence of the nation of Israel. All right, you, you got you some time. Hey, hey Hishar, you, you had some time, man. Hishar, you brought up 2 Corinthians 11, 6 and said... I never brought up no 2 Corinthians. Don't Yo, know man, that. huh? can we... Were you... Well, then you don't know the verse you quoted because you said, even though I be rude in speech, which is from 2 Corinthians. Understand what I'm 11. saying to you. Listen, listen, no, listen. No, no, no. Deal hey, with, hey, the, point. Deal with the point that I'm giving you. Don't let try me, to judge what I'm saying. Let me, let me bring up Deal the verse you brought up. Deal with what I'm giving you. Deal with what I'm giving go you. For real. You're not questioning yeah, what I'm giving you. He's okay, not okay, okay, just okay. what I'm giving him. He's, he's, he's he trying to answer. 2 Corinthians. Go ahead, Bokeh. Chapter 11, verse 6. And you said, even though I be rude in speech, you're as a, a damn justification. snake, man. You're an evil damn yeah, you cat. Got, you gotta let him talk. You gotta let him talk. Oh, yeah. You need some fruit of the spirit, though, brother. Regardless of the fact. Oh, yeah. As a justification for for swearing in the sense of taking the Lord's name in vain, you brought up Second Corinthians eleven six, which uh, says, even though I be rude in speech, in the King James version. The interesting thing about that is the Greek word behind the English word translated as rude. And you're saying that's what you were doing. Then the Greek word underneath there is idiotes. Try not to do all the name calling, man. The Greek okay, word in 2 Corinthians 11, 6 is idiotes. All right, so you know what? Okay. We're refraining from the name mm -hmm. callings. Let's move on to the next question because they're saying vocab Malone ain't answer the question. Oh, really? So um I don't know um who's next. Um is it, uh, 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 vocab or G conscious. G conscious is ne next. He wanted to go. Yeah, you guys actually have questions to pose. You have a question to pose, brother. Right. Um my question is is, is to priest Dan Daniela. Um Isaiah forty nine and six, you know, we jumped over there. And uh I wanna ask you this. Um you would agree that in Isaiah forty nine and six that um, the tribes of Israel consist of all of Israel, right? The tribes of Jacob. You can answer that. Tell him that it's going to take Hold on. He, he's going to unmute his stuff. Hold on. He's coming on. Got it. I know, I know. Let me pull up the script of this in question here. I'm a screenshot of y'all. All right, y'all. I apologize. The thing is that because Joel and I got two computers in the same room, I have to mute both of my mutes. So it takes me a minute for me to um unmute myself. So y'all got to give me a minute. Okay, so you asked me about Isaiah 49 and 6, right? Yes, you see it on the screen? Yeah, I see it on the screen. I have it in front of me, so I'm good. My thing to you, and I'm going to – I don't want – here's the deal, right? If, you, if we have questions, I'm going to be honest with you, right? You've been on the phone for a long time. If we have questions – I don't want to get bogged down. Like the first question that Hashar asked um, vocab, we kind of got bogged down. So I'm going to give an answer. You can either accept the answer I give or not, and we're going to move on to the next question so we can go back and forth like that. All right, I'm going to say this to you. To answer your question, do I think that every time that I see Israel that is talking about all the tribes of Israel, I'm going to say no, because by the time we're reading that passage, Israel had been split into two. So you had Israel and you have Judah. It's two different kingdoms. Two different kingdoms. They were two different nations pursuant to the book of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, and I believe it's either verse 22 or 32. They were considered two different nations. So no, every time I see Israel, I don't assume that it's talking about all 12 tribes. No. Sometimes it is talking about all of Israel, and other times it's only talking about the northern kingdom. So again, it has to be taken in context. Each verse, or each time that you see the word Israel, it has to be taken in context in that particular chapter. I don't jump to assumptions. So the answer is no. Right, right, because uh, let's read this scripture closely, right? Mm -hmm. He said, no, um, and he said that uh, at this time, you said that Israel was split at this time. Is that what I heard you say clearly? Yes. All right, so um, notice it says, and he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob, right? 
So we see definitely that the tribes of Jacob is, is mentioned here. Excuse me, sir. I'm on the thing. I'll see you in a minute. All right, bye. I'll love you. See. So it says that uh, it says, and he said, it is a light thing that thou should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore. We know that the tribes of Jacob. He's saying that it's somehow, some way. This is not talking about, you know, Israel or the the whole tribes of Jacob, which we see that the text clearly says that says that it says, and to restore the preserve of Israel. So you got two people that's mentioned here. You got the tribes of Jacob and those that are preserved out of Israel. He says, I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation to the ends of the earth. Now, here's the problem here. We can also find this quoted, and also, if you look on my screen, uh, Luke 2 and 32. It says, a light to lighten the Gentiles okay. and the glory of thy people Israel. So once again, when you look at this text, it's basically telling you that there's two people that are being mentioned here uh, in Luke 2 and 32. Overall, you see that it says that a light to lighten the Gentiles, but overall it says to the glory of thy people Israel. Now, how did you come to the assertion or assumption that this is not talking about all of Israel? I don't know how, but I can tell you. You asking me or you going to answer for me? Okay, where is that at? Tell me that. I where do you have to? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to answer you. And this is not something that can be gone over in a couple of minutes because, see, sometimes when you gloss over something really quickly, you kind of lose the, the understanding of what it's talking about. I already read in Isaiah, the 11th chapter, verses 10 through 13, I already read to you that Israel is scattered into all nations. You know, you what you're reading Isaiah 49 and uh, 6 is talking about to the ends of the earth. And Isaiah, the 11th chapter, is speaking about Israel being scattered into all nations. It's the same understanding. I think what we the problem that we're having here is this. The problem that we're having here is this. The problem is, is that we're stumbling over that word Gentiles. That's what we're stumbling. That's what we're jousting over. My concern or my issue to you is when you understand the history of the Old Testament in the Bible, you understand that the northern kingdom of Israel, the Most High wasn't dealing with the northern kingdom of Israel no more. That is why when you read Hosea, the first chapter, the Most High told Hosea that his children would be for signs. And his children have what is called omen nomer. Omen nomer is name signs. Every time Hosea had a child, the child represented something the Most High was going to do to the northern kingdom or the nation of Israel at the time. Because at that time, Israel was split in two. They were the kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Judah. So Hosea was prophesying against the kingdom of Israel. When the third child was born, the omen nomer or name sign that was put on that child was that the Most High told the kingdom of Israel they would no longer be his people. So if they were no longer to be the Lord's people, they were Gentiles. That's just clear. The Most High's people is Israel. If the prophet Hosea is, is being told by the Most High to tell the children of the children of the kingdom of Israel that they're no longer his people, now they go from being Jews to being Gentiles. That's the understanding. That's what Paul was telling you in Romans the ninth chapter. That's why when he says not of the Jews only, but also the Gentiles, he sends you back to Hosea so that you can see how the Most High pronounced on the northern kingdom of Israel that he wasn't dealing with them and he wasn't his people. So that that way you and I, we don't come up with our own interpretation. The Most High sends you back to Hosea so you can understand what Gentiles that's talking about. It's talking about the people who he prophesied in the northern kingdom that would no longer be his people for a period of time because they transgressed against the laws and went into idolatry. So this is the Gentiles that it's talking about. It's not talking about everybody. We have many, many, many verses that say the Most High is not dealing with the other nations. So if Isaiah 46, 49 and 6 is saying the Lord is dealing with all nations, that contradicts about a hundred scriptures. So it doesn't I, make sense. Well, well, I, 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 I got one more question for you. Uh, this is Isaiah... And I really got a plethora of questions, but wait, 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 wait. Sorry, sorry, Jika. I hate, I hate to cut you off. I know I'm not the moderator, but so Hashar got one question. So why are you asking two? You asked one. You are gonna get another chance? Why are you asking two? I'm okay. asking two. Because, hold on. The reason why I'm asking two because right. Hashar. Hold on, brother. Let me answer that. It wasn't my fault that Hashar wanted to get uh, engage in, you know. The beef and all that stuff. So he he wasted his time. Wait, 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 yo, yo, my man. We're gonna. Hold on one second. Hold on, Hansu Hadley. Hansu, make the decision. Question, bro. Uh, hold on one second. Um, brother Laron, just hold your questions. You'll have time to alternate them. You'll have time to do that. Uh, brother Danielle, if you have a question, that's fine. Just give him an opportunity to alternate. Um, because you did mention, uh, Brother G. Conscious, that you had a series of questions, so you'll definitely be allowed to do that, brother. I would appreciate that. 
My brother Daniela, you can you you may uh you can take. I'm back. sorry, Kansu. Yeah, the stuff was turned off. Hold on, um, Kansu. Um, yes. what say you? What, do well, you know what I was saying that G Conscious did mention earlier. He had a series of questions, so Daniela can take the floor, and we'll alternate back and forth because it was one question that Brother Hasha said. It's just that Hasha was passionate in what he was saying, and I'm sure Vocab Malone may have questions as well. So we're just going to alternate. Um. Uh, back and forth, if that's okay. Our uh, brother, Ashar, you cannot have the floor. I mean, brother Daniela, you can have the floor. Oh, Daniela, Ashar, you can't have the floor. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get my stuff. Hold on, hold on. 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 I know, I know. Come on, let's get it together. Let's, Go ahead. Let's, let's Come on. All right, so my whole thing is this, and I don't mean to sound funny. I don't have no questions for them because I already know what they what, what they stand for, and I don't mean to sound condescending or disrespectful. I don't care. I know that y'all care what we teach. That's why y'all say we represent the gospel the wrong ways. That's why you want to debate us. I don't care what y'all teach. You know what I'm saying? We're going to see on the day of judgment. Nonetheless, since I'm, I'm compelled to ask the question, I'm going to re-ask the question that Hasha asked Vocab Malone, but in a different way, a little more calmly. Hasha asked you how come it is that you don't go with the so-called so -called Jews, that's what we call them. You don't go with the so I, I don't have to ask you, G. I can ask anybody I want. There's no, I don't have to ask Joel. Joel, listen, bro. I'm I got to ask you. No, no. Okay, that's what I want. Hold on. Kansu, 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 no, no, no. Kansu, Kansu, these are stupid. Man, let's deal with the information, bro. I am. You can ask me what you're doing. I'm not here for that, bro. Any nigga can get killed. I don't know no beef like that, bro. I'm going to go. I'm going Let's put your stuff on mute, bro. I'm not on it. Hold on. Console. Console. Uh, just hold, hold on. Everything's okay. I'm not listen, uh, listen. Brother, brother, brother G-Con. This, this was bad. going perfectly before. All right. We all right. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Put your stuff on mute, bro. Put your stuff on mute, bro. We ain't going to keep on having this stuff going out of order. G consciousness. You cannot tell him what to ask or who to ask. Now I'm gonna let the moderator take it on and give y'all it again. Cause I think we have some misunderstanding. Now mind you, it's a lot of people watching. Let's keep this smoothie smoothly, very smoothly for the people. Let's not play games with this. We ain't gonna do this bickering back and forth. We here to be civilized and do this stuff like men. The little semantics that's going on back and forth, I don't like it. Go ahead, moderator. You got it, Consul. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, what? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to reiterate this again. It's not within context of who is getting questioned on what. If it's within context and premise of um, the discussion, then it is fine. If it, Who is it directed towards is fine as well. Um, each person has an opportunity to be alternative in what they answer. If you feel that you don't want to answer a question, you can respectfully say, I do not choose to answer that. That's not going to change any validity of the argument. Some, if a question you feel is out of context, then it is, and you don't have to answer it. A person would then have to digress and allow you to answer a question. That's, that's totally fair. So if Brother Daniela, you have a question, Go right ahead with those questions. If, if, if it's towards Vocab Malone and he chooses not to answer it, he just chooses not to answer it. Just like Brother Daniela did. He respectfully said, hey, I don't have many, I don't have a question, but I will reiterate out of understanding this particular question. So it's already open that you don't, you're not being forced or coerced to answer anything that will incriminate you. You don't have to do that. So uh, Brother Daniela, you have the floor. Thank you. It's funny. Because sometimes they say um, listening is an art. That's an old statement that one of my elders used to tell me, and it really is. Maybe if I was allowed to actually ask my question, you would see that my question is related to the topic. The topic is dealing with salvation, is it not? And we believe, our stance is, salvation is for the Jews or the Israelites. So asking a question about the Jews that are making the claim today is relevant because if they're the Jews, then all the scriptures that we read pertaining to salvation pertains to them. 
if we're the Jews and those scriptures pertain to us, that's that's our stance. So my question to Vocab Malone is this. Obviously, there are a people called Israel today who are the real Israelites. Someone on the earth making the claim to be the Israelites are the real Israelites. As Hashar pointed out, you, when you argue with us, add a layer to the argument and try to tell us that we're not the people, right? My whole thing, my question to you is this. Besides making the claim that they are Jews, I'm talking about whether you want to deal with the Ethiopians, the ones that are scattered in India, or the ones that's actually in the land of Israel today. Outside of making the claim that they are the Jews, what other evidence is there that they are really the people of Israel? Because in order for someone to say that they are a blood descendant of Israel, you'd have to dig up some bones from like the 4th century BC and do a DNA test from somebody today against those bones from the 4th century BC to see who are the real Israelites. You don't do that when you talk to these so-called Jews or these other nations. You just take their claim for granted that they're the people and argue doctrine with them. So again, we're going to ask you the question again and answer it in the context we're asking you. Why don't you ask them to prove and claim, prove their claim if they are Jews? Why don't you do that? All right. Um, you said what evidence do they have? They speak Hebrew. Their DNA matches other claimants who also claim to be Israelites. For example, the Sephardic have genetics that match people all the way in South Africa, such as the Limba. So What's there's all evidence. What's all okay. No, no, it's it's genetic testing from people groups that shows they have common they have common markers that match up, which would be strange to have people in or who originated or came out of Spain also match with people from South Africa, unless there was something to it. Uh, not only that, but some. Wait, 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 wait! You're not answering the question, King. Hold on, I'm not. Those I'm not. Claims. I'm not Those done answering it. You would have to. You would no, no, have it's to not a claim. You have to have what DNA. Is this? What is this? You have to have ancient DNA from an ancient Israelite, not no claim. You, you, you got. You got to let it. You got to let him answer. That's, that's crazy. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Yo, you didn't you're not understanding it. You're not understanding what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, you have two groups of people who claim to be Israelites. And their DNA, even though scattered very far across the globe, has specific markers that match up. That's more than just some claim about a first century, uh, you know, from an, a first century ossuary. Is Not that only that, we do have DNA. We do have DNA from first century ossuaries. So I don't even understand this. That's, that actually has been done. You know the bone boxes. We do have that DNA. But well, yeah, I but I said fourth century BC, not AD. You didn't. You're not. You're not listening. That's yep. what I said. I well, hold on. Jesus Christ. Ancient. Jesus Christ lived first century AD, so that's very relevant. Because are you could tell me he wasn't a real right. Jew, so it's very relevant. Well, because we got the high priest of his era. But it's not just a claim that they speak Hebrew. In fact, the commandment keepers had to learn Hebrew from mainly Ashkenazi Jews there in New York. As well as the traditions, and as as well as the fact that they actually have Torah scrolls. Now the thing is, I'm not really interested in if they're truly Israel ethnically. Only if they don't bow the knee. If they don't know, if they don't know, they don't make a big deal out about it. The real big deal between us is Christ the Messiah. That's what they make a big deal out of. So we debate if it's Christ the Messiah. The problem with you, even though the topic of debate is what's the biblical view of salvation, this there's such a one-track mind that all you want to do is talk about, listen, I'm actually an Israelite. No one ever asked you one time if you're an Israelite because it's irrelevant. If you don't bow the knee to Christ, you'll experience wrath of God, and you know that. So it matters if you're in a right standing with God. I proved that's what matters. It's relevant to Israel. I already proved that in the scriptures. And this is why. It, this is why it shows. You can't show me one you debate know, I've ever engaged. When you know, the topic you know, of the I'm debate. Many. You're lying. The truth is not in you. I've engaged many, and I'm gonna say this to you. You know why? I, that's you, not what they, I said. They, I said I. You know, I said you know, I have You know why you say that? I'm gonna tell you something. You know why? You say, chance to so talk, talk, one right. second. I promise. I'll be like two seconds. No, no, Danielle. I'm giving the floor to you. All right. You know why you make a statement as though the so-called Jews that claim to be Jews don't make a big deal about it. You know why they don't make a big deal about it? Because the whole entire world goes along with the fraud. So they don't have to they don't have to make a big deal about it because you all readily accept the fact that they're Jews. We I have to make a big, fraud. We have to we have to make a big deal about it because we gotta limbo? take back what's fraud. rightfully ours. But with are that being said, fraud? I'm a yield the floor because I I hey, just don't I'm just, I'm just are the limbo a fraud. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Y'all yeah, can ask your question. Go ahead. Are the limbo a fraud? Okay, cool. he, he chooses to digress from that yeah, question. Yeah. Brother G-Con has the floor. Brother uh, okay. G-Con has right. respectfully waited. 
Uh, he has he has a right, and if, uh, uh, to speak on the drug G con, you have the floor. Yeah, I I think that you know, as y'all know, you know, uh, I've been in the you know dealt with the conscious community with Sonetta just as well as these brothers have, and uh, also uh, with Team Osiris um, and other people, and I think that you know. Uh, when we, when we say we need some type of empirical data, that what these brothers are saying that the Africans, which is my ancestors, is basically saying that they're not, we can't get no salvation, so to speak. And then you got people like Divine Ron Prospect that know that they make these claims and don't really step up to the plate to defend what this book is saying as far as who salvation is for. And you got these brothers who he, there, who we see every day that teach these things that's where the problem come in at. Now, as I stated, I don't really have too much to say, you know, to these brothers that don't really want to deal with the information, but really want to bring brothers back to a state to where they they got to use these again, or they got to be on some other stuff. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't really want to be on that. I got a whole family, and these brothers, the, the type of man of a spirit, and I'm not saying Dan Yala, but Hashar bringing that man of a spirit that want to, brings they want to take a brother back somewhere and i'm not trying to do none of that so if you say that you're trying to resurrect the people you shouldn't try to resurrect the people with that state of mindset and i think that has to be stopped right there because all this we got people down in this area we got people down in that area that you know to a person that fear the lord that doesn't mean anything to anybody because anybody can die the next day josiah got killed when he didn't mind his business and the pharaoh came out and he got killed. So this, this is just wickedness and foolishness for real. And it, it brings me to a state to where I'm not trying to go back to that state anymore. Because I don't really care whoever, who over there, who over there. So let's not go and deal with that manner of spirit like that. And he's taking people there instead of let's just deal with this information and let's deal with that only. It's like these brothers got an agenda only to just deal with uh, what vocab or what how they feel. No, we said a, a, a agreement upon the biblical text. So that's what we want to deal with. And this is the same reason why, I, I, you know, I, I don't, this got to be, we got to get control of this. Because whether or not you like it or not, everybody who, who is not an Israelite or whatever the case may be, you know, we are entitled to something that God wants to be entitled to. And for y'all to come on and just say, oh, Africans ain't this and Africans ain't and who this and that, you ain't got no type of registry. This brother said he a priest. And Ezekiel, I mean, Ezra, when they came back, they had a registry saying what they was, that they was priests. Where's your registry at? What can you give account that you were a priest? And if you didn't have that registry, you couldn't be in that priesthood. So what registry did you even got? Hold, you... hold on, hold on. Um, I'm sorry. That's your question to but priest Daniel. You... To, to, to priest. It's not even a question just to get your panel together, man. That's my thing for reals. Fuck this nigga. Okay, okay. Uh, that... Hold on one second. Um, <laughs> the, and we, 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 you know, I expected this to to happen with the the passion and, and everything that's going on with everybody's opinion. But uh, G Khan, if you got a question, answer the question. I understand your your attempt to try to get um, everyone um, to be um, so Real quick, they say that's he it. asked a question where's already. G Khan's consciousness acts, where's his registry and all that? Um, I'm a mute on my end and then let Daniela answer. Then I believe her shawl got to go with his question. All right. Um, okay, well, uh, I'm going to say this. I don't know if that was a question or not. I don't think that that was a question. I think G-Con was making a statement. It was a statement. I feel like that, that was a statement. I feel like it on this panel. It was a, it was a question. Guys, then you're going to say it was a statement. Little, right, Bob, that's, that's this. Not, this is what the Bible says. That's not. That's not. That's hold on, bro. I really want to. I really want to. Salvation. Got it on him. I don't want to argue. I'm, I'm saying. Like, do you understand that? Y'all, y'all arguing from a, a point of this beef and all. It's f me. It's f that. But I'm not out here on these street corners. You know, so it couldn't be f me. You out here in the light. I ain't out here. <laughs> All right, so now let me answer that question. Because oh, F me, you know what I'm saying? Let me, let me, let me answer the okay, question. Okay, go, go ahead, Brother Daniela. You know, you know, I don't care about that. Let me answer the question, right? Um, here you go. This is going to be like a 10-second, this is going to be a 10-second answer to the question, okay? So this is what the Bible says. This is um Exodus, this is Exodus chapter 19, verse 6. This is what the Bible says, right? Exodus chapter 19, verse 6. 
and ye shall be unto, ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests kingdom of priests and a holy nation these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel so we are a kingdom of priests now you had to be show your registry that you are the sons of Aaron in order to do the take care of the, the, the temple and do the priestly duties in the service of God but Israel is a kingdom of priests from there let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 5 and then I'm, and I'm gonna deal the floor right back this is not hard ain't no daggone registry for Israelite to be a priest where's that in the Bible we're a kingdom of priests Revelation chapter 5 one, 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 hold on one second All right, Revelation chapter 5, verse 10, and have made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on earth. So again, the priesthood is open to all Israel. But if you wanted to be of the if you were of the sons of Aaron, then it was a different type of priesthood that you did. So we're all priests. So I don't have to have no daggone registry, man. Where you get that from? The floor is yours. The floor is yours. Right. Link up, right. right, exactly. Let Vocab ask a question. He can't, the dude can't dominate everything. Man. Vocab and G Kind, you have a floor. Yeah, um, it's interesting who's called priests. It's Christians. First Peter 2 9, which you just quoted, says royal priesthood. And then First Peter 4 16 says, even if you suffer as a Christian. So who has the priesthood? Christians. Don Yala earlier said he's not a Christian. Because of Hebrew when they just change. Now, my question is this. If Gentiles can really mean scattered Israelites, why didn't the Holy Spirit inspire the human writers of the Scripture to use these Greek words? Dia Scorpizo Hellenistes or Dia Scorpizo Israelite? When that word, literally, those phrases together literally means scattered Israelite or scattered Hellenized Israelite. Why didn't that word get used instead of Gentile, which is actually kind of confusing because usually Gentile are described as the other nation or Goyim in the old. Why not just use the actual word to describe what you're saying to avoid any confusion? Scattered Israelite, Diascoporzo, Hellenistes, Diascoporzo, Israelite. Why not? Why the confusion? Why wasn't that phrase used instead of Gentile? Is that a question to priest yes. Daniela? Why isn't the phrase Dias Kaporzo Hellenistes used when he's saying that means scattered Israelite? I'm showing him in the Greek there's a word that actually means scattered Israelite. Why wasn't that phrase employed to describe scattered Israelite? I already explained that. When you go to Isaiah the 11th chapter, even. No, 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 no. Yes, I. You can't tell me how to answer the question, King. You can't tell I me. I can tell you how you're not answering. No, no, no. Yeah. You can't tell okay. me. Listen, I didn't accept your answer before, but you got a chance to say it, right? You got a chance Greek. to say I'm asking you a question about the Greek New Testament, sir. Sir, sir. Okay, let me tell you something. The Bible is one book. That's why when Christ walked the earth and even the Apostle Paul themselves, they all quoted. Let me fit. Okay, listen. If you want the floor back, if it was a rhetorical question, let me know. I'll fall back. Okay. The question I'm asking about the Greek. I'm answering you. You can't tell me how to answer the question. You did not answer my question to my satisfaction, but nonetheless, you said it was your answer. Okay, so I'm answering you now. I'm telling you. The reason why you see Gentile and it's referring to Israelites in the New Testament, that is something that you first see in the Old Testament. I already gave you the scripture, Isaiah 11, verse 10 on down. I already gave you the scripture. I already showed you in the book of Hosea that the Most High said that the, the kingdom of Israel would no longer be his people. I already gave you the history for that. So if the kingdom of Israel were no longer God's people, what were they? Because you're either a Jew or a Gentile. So if God said that they were no longer his people, then they were no longer at that time considered to be Jews. That leaves one classification left, and that's Gentile. That's the understanding for that. Plain and simple, it's not hard to understand. You don't have to accept it. I don't accept your answer, but I answered you. All what right? does the so, word Hellenistes mean then? What does that word mean, Hellenistes, that's used there in, in Acts to describe the widows? What does that word mean? Those are also Israelites. Those were also it, Israelites yeah, as well. Yeah, it means yeah, Hellenized, Hellenized, Hellenized listen, Israelites. Listen, listen, so there's okay. a word already okay, there. Okay, 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 okay. Israel was not just scattered. Israel was not just scattered in uh, Greece. Israel was also scattered in Rome and many other places. And don't wait, let me finish. 
they were scattered not only in Greece, but they were scattered. You had Israelites that were in Rome as well. You can shake your head all you want, but when you read Acts the second chapter, it tells you that there were strangers from Rome that came on the day of Pentecost. Those were Jews. Israel was not just scattered amongst the Greek uh, amongst the Greeks. They were also scattered in Rome and many other places. And all know, those peoples, no matter where not, Israel was scattered, they were all that. called Gentiles. That's they were not all called Hellenized. Gentiles. Hellenized doesn't mean you live in Greece. Hellenized means that's that you adopt Greek. That's not what I said. Greek. Wait, hold that's on. Let me, let me bring some clarification. You said they were no, all no, only no, in no, Greece. No, 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 no. Let me bring some clarification. This took place in Jerusalem. Let me bring some clarification to you. The reason why, the reason why you see Greek words in the New Testament is because the manuscripts from which the New Testaments we read today come from Greece. They come from either anti. No, they don't. They, they wait, mostly wait, wait, come let me from ask you a question. Wait, let me ask you a question. The manuscripts. Wait, 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 wait. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. The manuscripts that we read today, let's start with the KJV. The KJV comes from the Alex from the Textus Receptus, which is which is documents that come down from the Antioch line. Okay? That stuff was written in Greek. Okay? It was written in Greek. So wait, 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 wait. So when you're reading the New Testament and you see Greek words, right, that go back to the Greek, it's because the underlying text comes from the Greek. I know that's what I'm New telling Testament, you. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that was my question. That's why I said I want to ask you in Greek, why didn't the Bible just use the word Hellenistes? Because you admitted you said those are Hellenized Jews. Then when I asked you the follow-up question, you said, well, they didn't all live, live in Greek. But Hellenistes doesn't mean I you answered, live. I just in, you hold didn't on. Second part of my answer. I answered it that. The reason why the New Greece Testament and reads Jew, the way it means you reads adopted right their now, customs. I'm answering you. The reason why the New Testament, yes, you had Israelites scattered all over the place. The reason why the New Testament reads the way it reads today. Is because the underlying text that we read today comes from Greek. That's why. I, even though, I know Israel, that. Was scattered, even why. though Israel was scattered in many other places, the but, underlying text of the English Bibles we read today comes from Greek. So it's the I know that. three words in the English that come out of the Greek. Okay, Danya, so Allah, I've brought up about five Greek words in this debate, so I don't know why you're telling me this. I'm answering this you, and you keep going in circles with me, but when I ask what, you a question, you didn't What answer. does the word Hellenistes so mean? What does the word Hellenistes mean? Just say you don't accept the answer. Let's move on. No, no, I'm answer. asking you what it means in Greek. No, asking follow up questions. We ain't doing that. We didn't let uh, G man do that, and I didn't look, do that either. It's a back and forth because I'm not monologue. I'm asking you questions. one at a time. My man, let me say this, right? No, hold for a second. No, no, let me say this real quick. I'm sorry, Consul. Either we're going to stay in the rules or we're not. You want to ask me like five follow up questions, and then you're going to act like I'm supposed to answer those. No, because I didn't ask you five questions. You got your one out. You got to yield the floor. It's Harshar's turn. You got to yield the floor. Put your stuff on mute so I shot could go. Okay, I need more open questions. Um, that but point taken and point made. Um, Brother G Consciousness, Brother Hashar, um, you haven't had exchange. Do you have exchange or a question? Well, right, go ahead, Hashar. Go ahead. Well, again, all praises to the Most High. And I'm going to stay rowdy as ever. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to stay as a lion. You know what I'm saying? Through the spirit of the Most High, why you was shot? Because our people are under auspices of war. Now, um, that buffoon just said to me some crap about, you know, talk about the hands and all that. But he's the same one that played the violin in the Christian, the Christian way, but had rude words for uh, a divine prospect. Yeah, all right? So, 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 so that right there shows I that you're not shows that you're a goddamn hypocrite, I and that's it. the Greek for an actor. Now, let me finish and shut your okay. ass up. Yeah, yeah. Now, for you, vocab, understand yeah. this one thing. What you presented to Daniel Allah, speaking about the language, right? Yeah. When you yeah. said about the language, right? The question that you said, how come it says, Ellen et cetera, et cetera. Remember, there's something that's called whitewashing. When you look at all the monuments, okay, in the catacombs of Rome, we're not even talking about the, the, the time of Greece. We're talking about when, during the Roman Empire, there was a whitewashing of all the murals that were in the catacombs. There were a destruction and a whitewashing of all the, the pictures and statuettes that were put up. Now, that's documented about the whitewashing. There was also something called a lingua whitewashing. Lingua whitewashing was where they changed the lingua. With a Greek coin language, certain words was changed in the etymology of the words and the connection to the ancient Greek. So when they started to change, Change it in the new era of the Greek. This is what most people read and grab today. Here it says Hellenista. Here it says this. Here it says that. There was a whitewashing within the language as well. 
These are facts, and you do not know that if you not have not been to Greece or Rome yourself to speak these languages. Now, to show you and prove that I'm going to drop the building on you, because we have a female that has do been doing this research, and this young sister is on her way back out to Greece, and she just came from India last summer to show you the languages and show you the, the, the documents and where these things will change. Because I said that I'm coming to destroy your ass. I'm going to make question? sure that the blood squeezes out of your throat. Your tongue as a dog will wag no more upon the children of Israel. You better believe that as long as I live, I will be a defender of the children of God, the so-called black, Hispanic man, woman, and child of Negroid and Indian descent. And it can be taken as any other way as it want to. But according to the scriptures in the book of Exodus, the Lord is a man of war. And so am I, because I follow the words of my father, the creator of heaven and earth, and things seen and unseen, known and unknown. You can take it where you want to and come with all this slick daddy for war buff crap, but it's not going to happen here. We're going to deal, just deal with the children of Israel. If you go in China, anything that was written in yep. China was written for those people at that time and for those people to come. Even the books of philosophies. When you go to Japan, the same thing. When you deal with the Bhagavad the Bhagavad was written by Indians for Indians about their gods and so on and so forth. So how could the book of Israel change? How could it change going and say now it denotes to another God or another people? It makes no damn sense, man. The Mashiach himself spoke about the nation of Israel. When the angel came unto his mother, the angel said unto his mother that you shall be a savior unto Israel. It didn't say nobody else. Ashar? Ashar, do you have a question? It didn't say nobody else. No, I'm do going on my question? soliloquy. I'm done. I'm oh, giving my soliloquy the same way that right Chief now. Consciousness went on his soliloquy when he started talking about the hands. So my question is in the essence of my speech. I question what the hell are you doing talking to Israelites when you have not came and attacked the so-called white man that calls himself a Jew the same way. You have not answered that question from the beginning. So I don't dance nowhere and I ain't going to allow nobody else to dance. You won't do that before me, nigga. This ain't no dance contest and ain't no winner here. You tell the truth. That's it. He violated the fourth commandment earlier, and now he's violating the sixth commandment by demonstrating the murder in his heart. Hashar, I pray for you. I pray that you would come to the truth of Messiah, who was not in your spirit and mode at all. In fact, the essence of what you're demonstrating here today is what put Christ on the cross. And I pray that you could return and repent to Christ from what, what you're into now. Because all you're demonstrating is that murder is in your heart. You're not demonstrating anything else to us. doesn't make anyone better because we're all sinners. But sure, I don't see how uh, this is a good debate or discussion. Not only that, I don't see how it really has a spirit of Christ, which is what you emailed me about. Um, All right, brother G. Carm, you have the floor, brother G. Carm. Yeah, I, I want to just deal with the information. Um, man. Hold on, hold on. Um, uh, Sean said he had a question. I don't know. If oh, you gotta let him go again. I mean, come on, man. No, I'm saying he said he had a question. Okay, now here's the problem. You saying let me go again? No, just ask your question. I'm gonna ask my hold on. I'm asking my question. Everybody keep trying to stick elephant tranquilizers in me to be quiet and shut up. But the, but if you know, no, I, ask a question. I, 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 ask a question. I'm not listening. I'm not. Don't listen. You're not gonna dictate to me. Else that you. Talk. All right. Let me. Um. Okay. Let me break this. Well, that's right. Here's my question. Here's my question to you, Vocat. You, so, you want to talk about the scripture and quote scripture and pull scripture all day long? Then let's deal with it. Does not the scripture say that if someone was accused of something, that it's supposed to be two or three witnesses? When you brought Marcus Webb before the world to accuse Israelite United in Christ, did you go in and speak to those that he accused? Did you bring those before that he accused and say, listen, this is what you did and this is what you did wrong and this is what the scriptures say that you should not do? Did you do that? Uh, yeah, actually, we, we had we had about a half a dozen. Now it's up to about 12 team members who confirmed almost everything Marcus said that they had knowledge of, they confirmed. So actually, the answer to your question is yes. Now, everybody doesn't want to go public like Marcus Webb, and it's exactly because of One West behavior like you're demonstrating. But yes, I actually did do what you said. Everybody that come to us and said they were an ex-member you know, member or whatever, we didn't interview and put everybody on because not everybody's story checked out equally well. But with Marcus Webb, actually we did do what you just asked. So yet the answer is yes. And it was from multiple camps of IUIC. Right. Hey, hey uh, 
I don't know if I can respond to some stuff or do state that these brothers stated for scripturally. I would like to do so. Would that be cool, Kasu? Oh, yeah, you got it. Go ahead. All right. So uh, he went to Romans nine, right? Now, here's the problem with with how he read it because we know when you deal with Romans nine, right? Let's put it on the screen. Matter of fact, let's put it on the screen so we can look at it. Uh, all right so can you guys see my screen yeah we see it we see it yeah you clear bro all right so let's look at romans 9. And this is the type of discussion that they don't really want to have when it comes to the information because it's always, we're not going to answer that, but let's get to the other folly. Let's get to the war on the streets and all that. Uh, it says, I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brother, my kinsman, according to the flesh. Now, what's odd about this is because any individual will read this and say, who is he writing to? We know this is an epistle of, of Paul, and he's writing to the Romans, right? But let's look, who is he writing to? Because if he's writing to somebody, he's also talking about his kinsmen or his brother or those concerning the flesh. Let's read that. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brother my kinsmen according to the flesh. Now this is Paul writing his letter. So who is he writing to concerning his kinsmen according to the flesh, his brother? That's what one would look at. They don't look at that like that. Look what it says in verse four. Who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory? Now they'll say, well, this epistle is to the Northern tribe. Well, hold on for a minute. Paul just stated that he was writing to, uh, he was writing to, I mean, he, he was writing concerning his kinsmen according to the flesh who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption. Now, if you look at it, this brother already just stated that he stated, then Daniel already stated what pertaineth to the Israelites. That was, guess what? The adoption. So even Israel was adopted into the family of God. When did this adoption take place? When he called them up out of the nations, basically, or called Abraham up out of the nations and took on that adoption and took on Abraham's seed. So when you look at this, who are Israelites to whom pertain the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law? But not only that, we understand that it was given unto them. But let's look at this real quick. Let's look at Deuteronomy 5 and 2, because he also made a claim on something in Deuteronomy 5 and 2. I mean, uh, uh, watch what this says. It says, the Lord our God made a covenant with us in Orab. Who did he make that covenant with? With the Israelites. With Israel as a whole. There was no split the nations during that time. Watch what it says in verse 3, though. The Lord made not this covenant with our fathers. Who is he talking about? Daniela? But with us, even us, who are all, all of us here alive this day. He's Hold on, real quick, real, real quick, real quick, real quick. We're about to, I'm, 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 we, we about to, we got to wrap this up. Is that a question? I got to ask you real quick. Is that your question? Because we got to wrap it up. We got to have each person do the closing statements and then Kansu got to do his thing. So come on, brother. Get to the question. My main thing is this is this is my question, Daniela. Who was he talking about? And Isaiah, I mean, uh, the scripture that I just brought. Ooh, I got. Hold on, let me go to it so I can be cl cl clarified. Um, five and two, five and three. Says the Lord made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us who are all here this day. I'm asking you that question in regards to what I read in Romans chapter nine concerning. When it talks about who who uh who the um covenants pertain to. Go ahead. As far as the law. 
Just the top all right, volume. Joel. All right, give me a second. Right here, man. Right here. All right, volume. All right. Up. Am I sharing my screen or is that his screen still? Nah, that's you. You go ahead. Talk. Oh, okay. Right look, now, I'm going to answer you. I'm not even going to share my screen. I'm going to answer you. First thing is first, right? Um, it would behoove you, right? If you're going to have a debate or a conversation with somebody, right? And I haven't done this to you, and I haven't done this to vocab, at least not tonight. Be sure that you know my doctrine before you tell the audience that I'm going to say. Because if you ask me, I'm not going to say that the Epistle of Rome was written to the Northern Kingdom. If you can find a video where I say, where I say that the Epistle of Romans was written to the Northern Kingdom, I'll become a Christian tomorrow and follow you. Find it. Don't put words in my mouth. Right? I have to say that before I answer the question because that was very disingenuous. I cannot allow people to think that's what I teach. You clearly see who Paul was writing to in Romans, the first chapter. Clearly, it is not the Northern Kingdom, although he was mentioning the Northern Kingdom further on in that chapter. So I have to, first of all, say that. To answer your question, when you read in um, Deuteronomy, the uh, what you just read in Deuteronomy, the fifth chapter, right? What you see there is that Moses is speaking to the Israelites. Now, there were certain covenants that the Most High made with men before Israel, before Moses. There was a covenant with Adam. There was a covenant with Noah. There was covenants with Abraham. So those are all the fathers and the patriarchs whom the Most High made covenants with. But the Most High made a special covenant with Israel, which you can read in the book of Psalms, chapter 50, verse 5, where it says, gather my saints together. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The covenant of sacrifice was made with the Israelites in the wilderness. And that covenant of sacrifice was given to them so that they could basically, when they sin, they can be pardoned for their sins by shedding certain blood under the old covenant. So the Most High made a, a covenant with them that he didn't make with our forefathers before them. And this could go on and on and on and on. And I could give many, many more scriptural references. But as the brother said, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to try to be short because he wants to end the live stream. You see what I'm saying? Now, y'all brothers. No, 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 no follow up. No follow up. It's our turn. Come on, Kate. Right, 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 wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me say this right. Let me say this right. When I when I ask my questions of y'all, I didn't ask a follow up. So because I'm asking a follow up, I'll tell you you can't ask a follow up. Now I'm ducking you. No. Play by the rules, Kate. I'm ducking. You ducking. You okay, then. Ask your question. How? Because you, you want to ask a follow up and I say no? Anything you ask me, I'm going to let you go. That's not the rules, King. Now you want to break the rules. That's not the rules. Oh, you duck it. You duck it. You can say whatever the hell you want. Right. Hey, 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 anybody know G consciousness? I've been there, bro. Whatever whatever you ask me, I'm answering it, bro. If I if I if I was ducking you, if I was ducking you, I wouldn't have been sitting on this live shit for the last two hours. That's a joke, and everybody knows that he's sitting right here, King. But you're not gonna ask unlimited questions. No, you're not gonna you're not gonna ask unlimited questions all night as though I ain't got something else to do, King, with all due respect. I know they can hear me. That's hold crazy. on, G Con, everybody calm down, moderator, do your job. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You we're about to close it out. Oh, I know they can hear me. Moderator. You got it. Yes, sir, it. yes, sir. But you know, I'm gonna say this and, and I think um uh everyone had made their points. And I, I can't stress this enough, and even for the listeners that are listening, I know g -Con very well. I know of Priest Daniela and our brother Hasha very well. Um, I understand the passion. I under, I've actually the first time I've had an exchange with Brother Vocab, um, but I know of him. And you're going to get passion. That's just what you're going to get. Um, those who are watching, you have priests and those that are dedicated in a discipline um regardless of what you think that this is just a, a basic debate all of these men have a strict regimen and discipline in their culture this is their culture this just isn't like we're talking about history or we're talking about science we're talking about the way people live and we're talking about it within the context of scripture that determines ethics whether things are right or wrong according to the most high they're created, they're benefactor. So you're going to get like a hasha that's on fire because he teaches his children the information he speaks. You're going to have a priest, Daniela, act priestly. That's why he is a priest. You're going to have the brother G consciousness and the brother vocab. They are of the culture of the SOG. They are going to be technicians of scripture. So I do want to, I do want to give credence 
to these four brothers who have put themselves out in the public for two hours, which they don't do. They were not paid to do this. They are away from their craft. Uh, me being in that same vein, this is a craft. It's a lifestyle. And if you don't know, if you have never met a passionate peer priest, they're not a priest. Each one of these brothers are walking in that fold. You're going to have this kind of passion because this is about life. So I do want everyone in context to understand that it takes a heavy discipline to maintain consistency in the walk of faith, whatever faith that might be. It takes a lot of discipline. A lot of you don't understand the years and hours of study that these brothers have put in to be able to speak on the level that they're speaking. They just didn't pick up a book yesterday. So let's, let's not. So some of you who are listening for the first time or may have never been exposed to these brothers. Just respect that, and that's why I was a little more lenient because I respect the walk of a priest. It's a narrow walk, so it's not something you don't get a lot of room for error in this particular vein. So it's not your typical uh, debate on who is this and that. That's not the typical debate, and it's not going to end tonight. So just understand that, um, and I do want to, with all respects, appreciate each brother. For, for me personally, outside of vocab who I met, now for the first time, you've consistently been the people that I know you are. And I can't really expect more from another man, respecting the man as you know, as you should. So I do want to open the floor to closing statements by each of these brothers who, who uh, uh, personally do deserve that. And I'm going to start the, the closing statements with Brother Vocab, followed by Brother Hashar, um, Brother um, G. Khan, and then closing with Brother Daniela. Is that acceptable by the panel? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, real quick before they go, people subscribe to Joel Benjamin five two eight and Joel Benjamin. <laughs> he laughing. Yo, real talk, man. Nah, to hell with this. Yo, you see Katsu there laughing. Yo, Katsu, you know your screen ain't locked. Nah, man. We got because people's getting this for free. To hell with that, man. Joel Benjamin five two eight live subscribe. Make sure y'all hit the like button and make sure y'all go to Joel Benjamin 528. So that's the two channels. We're going to let these brothers get what? Two minutes? Two minutes? Two minutes? Two minutes, two, two minutes is fair. Two minutes closing two minutes. out. And we're going to keep it to two minutes, y'all. <laughs> we're going to go over Consul's timing, y'all. Y'all ain't going over that two minute mark. All right. We had Nicholas Brooklyn. All right. 1396 Fulton Street. Before I end it out, just to let people know. Um, what we got coming up one more time Wednesday May 24th 2017 we got the importance of um, recognizing your divinity in the age of Aquarius okay so let's not act like we don't know what's going on then we have the other one that's tomorrow Sunday May 21st 2017 people 2017 may 21st that's tomorrow we have the baba booker t coleman all right you can get the tickets on event bright you can get the tickets on event bright or you could come down to um nicholas brooklyn it's all oh, doors open at 5 p.m it starts at 6 p.m or you could call for vending 718-858-4400. Then we got Ross Ben, author of Rock of Ages and Crystal Earth Keeper. He presents Mandela Didn't Do It, the Philadelphia Experiment Effect. Plus, we're going to have Mama Kafunya in the house. She's one of the practitioner of the healing circle that we have here every Tuesday at Nicholas Brooklyn, 1396 Fulton Street. Okay. This event with Ross Ben will be May 25th, okay? Doors are open at 6 p.m. You can also get this on Eventbrite. Um, salute to um, Basim for hooking that up, all right? We're going to make sure we do it right. Global Media, um, Nicholas Brooklyn, we're going to make sure we give it to you right. And salute to King Simon. Let me throw this out there real quick. Salute to um, Wifey Benjamin for holding it down. Salute to Suicide H29. 
Salute to Uncle Shug. Salute to everybody that support Joel Benjamin 528 and the international audience. And give a round of applause for all the men on here. I don't have my effects, people, but you know, woo, 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 wee. You get it. You get the idea. All right? And definitely give it up for the moderator, Kansu Sheshmu Amun. He did a damn great job. Give it up for them. Kansu, you got the all right, man, brother Vocab Malone. Uh, with all due respects, brother, you do have the floor. And you have two minutes, brother, with your closing statements, man. Thank you. In the beginning, we asked the question, what is the biblical view of salvation? I gave four points. No one can do what the law requires. The old covenant points to Christ. Christ fulfilled the law and paid the penalty for our sin. Christ has ushered in a new and better covenant. I gave eight scriptures in the opening statement alone, and I do not believe that these were adequately answered in any way to give an alternative understanding of what salvation really is from the One West perspective. Instead, a lot of it was personal attacks and discussions about people's motivations. Now, one key thing that was brought up was the idea that Gentiles are not under uh, breaking the law, so they're not even considered sin sinners, so they can't have salvation. But I want to close reading this passage, and this is how I'll use the rest of my time. It's from Romans chapter 3, because it'll contradict that notion. Verse 9, what then? Are we better than they? No, and no wise, for we have before prove both Jews and Gentiles that all are under sin. Then I want you to go to verse 19. Now we know what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall be no flesh be no, justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Continuing on, reading verse 21 of Romans chapter 3. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Now I want to read these last few verses at the end of the chapter, 28, 29, 30. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. 30 seconds. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. What is the biblical view of salvation? It is that man is a sinner in desperate need of sin. I don't know why that concept was, seemed to be mocked in the beginning, but it's true. And Jesus Christ is the only answer Time. to the problem, for he is the Savior. Time. Thank you, Brother Vocab. Uh, Brother Hashar, respectfully, you have two minutes when you are ready for closing statements, Brother Hashar. Two minutes? Yep, two minutes. Um, is time starting now? now? As soon as he says he's ready. Oh, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Go ahead, I'm King. Ready. Yeah, yeah, all praise to the Most High. I just want to say this. Understand this. Vocab Malone, you are finished. I understand it's the AOC, the ambassadors in the lives of Israel. We're going to swarm on you like the 10 plagues in Egypt. You are now under that category. You shall be annihilated with the rest of the apologetics. Number one, he has never answered the question, how come he has not addressed or went after the so-called white man that calls himself a Jew with the same vehemency that he has went after the black Hebrew Israelites, the so-called black Hebrew Israelites. Also, I take with great disdain and disrespect that term speaking about one west those were some great brothers and elders in the past that's number one number two my roots run deeper than that over there in israel before those bastards got in the land in 1948 okay and you're gonna find that out with a boot up your ass and the word of the creator upon your neck hanging you understand this because you are nothing but a coy liar that has moved okay. around in the community in and out stating your lies as facts and you shall be destroyed Thus saith the Lord. Isaiah 45, 17, it says this. But Israel, it shall, said, but Israel, come on, shall be saved in the Lord. Shall be saved in the Lord. Come on. With an everlasting salvation. Everlasting means forever. It's nonstop, you idiot. Come on. Ye shall not be ashamed. It says we shall not be ashamed. Come on. Nor confounded. Nor confounded by that apologetic garbage you spew, you demon. Come on. World. It's world. The Israelite world. Come on. Without end. Without end. It don't stop. It can't stop and it won't stop. 
And with that, I say shalom to the Hebrew Israelites across the borders of the earth, man. And the white man is the devil that the Bible speaks about. And so are you, G consciousness, and you're going to feel the hand of God. Ten seconds. You yield the floor. You yield? That That's is it. time. Okay. Um, with that being said, I'll digress the floor to um, the more than worthy brother G consciousness. Let me know when you're ready, brother G con. I'll yield the floor to you, brother. Yeah. Uh, the majority of the white man is the devil. The majority of the black man is the devil because we got black devils too. And we just witnessed one. But let me bring this out real quick. We got all types of devils. The majority of people that's doing devilish work is devils. So let me bring this out. Uh, Isaiah 56 and 3. Neither let the son of the stranger that have joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord have utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. For thus said the Lord unto the eunuchs to keep my Sabbaths and choose to do the things that please me and take hold of my covenant. Even unto them will I give in my house within my walls a better place and a name better than of sons and daughters. You better understand that. I will give them an everlasting name, everlasting, a name that shall not be cut off. Also to the stranger that join himself, join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants and everyone to keep his Sabbaths and from polluting them and take hold of his covenant. One minute. His covenant. One minute. It says, even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings, their burnt offerings, their keeping covenant, their burnt offerings and their sacrifice should be acceptable upon my altar. For my house should be a house of a house called a house called a prayer for all people. What don't you understand that all people is not just subject unto Israel? So therefore, he says that he's going to bring uh, strangers into his household to take hold on him and take hold on his covenant. What these brothers is teaching is hypocrisy. That's what they teaching. I understand you heard that uh, our ancestors sold us into slavery through the uh, process of what we see the global elite, but they was working with them and they were trying to get that uh, uh, dollars. Thirty seconds. Know? So that's just the whole thing. You know, if you don't turn to Christ and give your, give your life to him, overall, you're going to be sin as, the, as they sin. Sin through the eyes of looking on people in a way that you should be. seconds. But not really dealing with what God is really trying to do for us. Time. Thank you, Brother G-Con, very much. Um, I believe the last uh, but not least, Priest uh, Daniela, are you ready for the floor? You ready to take the floor as we as you close? All right, sorry about that. You can hear me, right? Yes, sir. All right. Um, just as with their opening statements, with their closing statements, they simply are going in a circle like the hamster in the wheel, repeating themselves of things we already answered. We already gave them the understanding of who the Gentiles and the strangers were because it was prophesied by all the prophets that Israel would discontinue from the heritage, discontinue from the laws. The Most High would drive Israel into all the nations. They would serve other gods, wood and stone. They would forget their heritage. All these things are prophesied in the Old Testament. And that was the purpose of Christ coming so that Israel could be redeemed from the curses that were written in the law that was cursed, that was written upon Israel so Israel could be redeemed and we could be adopted back to the Most High through Christ's sacrifice under that new covenant. And it's really simple to understand. We elaborated on all those points Regardless of what he said, it's very clear for people to go back and look at this again. And I have many other lessons on my channel that you can go and you can see. But what I find to be very, very, very interesting to me was to see people that are engaging in a conversation, like going on the comment boards and trying to sway the people. Like if you have a strong argument, let the people decide. One the, fact you try, the, the, the fact that you have to go and try to sway them to make them think that you're winning in an argument that you're clearly not when they go back and watch is just really, really ridiculous to me. Christ was prophesied both in the Old Testament and the New Testament to be coming to Israel. That didn't change. So if Christ was coming to Israel and he's the God, that he is the salvation and the savior of the Israelites. And furthermore, and even more importantly, when you read Romans, the third chapter, as I stated before, when it speaks about all being under concluded under sin, that all is talking about Israel because all Israel transgressed the laws. The laws were never given to the other nations. You cannot get around that. Psalms 147, 19 and 20 tells you the most I didn't deal with the other nations like that. They did not have the laws. You can't get around that. So with that, I yield the floor. I say seconds, thank right. you, Consul. I appreciate you, Consul, for uh, moderating this debate fairly. And we're going to let the people decide if we're going to go ahead and continue doing what we do in the streets, cutting Christians every week. And we love it. Uh, <laughs> and that's time. My long time. 
Okay, thank you very much. Um, I do think uh, this is a close to the uh, structured argument in regards to the topic. Um, what is the right biblical view of salvation? I see people had some harsh things to say for both sides. Yeah, I had some very harsh things to say in the comment section for Priest Daniela. All right, some very harsh things for- Someone come to the camp. Come to the camp if you have a problem. Come to the camp. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish now. Um, yeah, I had some harsh words for General Hushar. Yeah, I had some very harsh words. Yeah, I had some very harsh words for General Hushar. Yeah, I had some very harsh words for G Consciousness. And yeah, I had some very, very harsh words for Vocal Malone. Now, like them or hate them, these people are taking time out their schedule because each side could have just simply said, yo, I don't want to be bothered with this. But they made sure they brought the information for the people. Hashar, you see General Hashar with them glasses? It's a reason why he got on them glasses. You see, right, Kantu? You see it, right, Kantu? I already know, sir. It's a, it's a reason why he's wearing that. The man was doing construction work and got metal. Metal. All right? And shards in his eyes and he still wow. took the time to come up here and do this wow. both have malone has his um family to take care of he still took the time out to do this hasha not hasha i'm sorry um priest daniela lived quite in west bubble land and he took the time <laughs> out to come out here and do this yeah. all right not only that you have the man G consciousness who also take the time out of his busy schedule to deal with his family and of course we know me the shop is going right now we got events people support those who support you 